is going on? Miami Hurricanes fans. What a weird feeling, right? The final call-in show on the Coach Coop YouTube channel for 2023. That's right, the final call-in show of the year. But we're here on a Wednesday night, which is not my normal night. But that's because this game is going down on a Thursday, tomorrow at 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time. So everything's going to be thrown off. With that being said, I appreciate each and every one of you very much for hanging out with me tonight because it's it's not my normal night. I'm not usually live on Wednesdays. Uh, there are a lot of other Kane YouTubers that are typically live tonight. I'm usually live on Fridays. So I don't know what the turnout is going to be. Also, with that being said, that provides possibly a great opportunity for some of you to get through on the phone line that haven't been able to in the past. I know it's always a struggle to get in on the phone line for the score prediction contest, $300 on the line, but there should be an opening tonight. So this is your final shot in 2023 to take home the $300 for the score prediction contest. So we're going to have that going tonight, and it should be a really good time. We're going to discuss the pinstripe bowl. We're going to talk about the matchup, and we're just going to have some fun. Uh, does, uh, can I get a quick mic check? If you guys don't mind, I really cranked it up tonight. So I don't know if it's going to make me sound raspy or staticky or weird or different at all. Maybe you guys can't tell a difference, but I've still noticed that a lot of other YouTubers that I watch are a lot louder than me. And I tend to scream a lot <laughs> and yell and uh, get in my feelings and emotions. And, you know, I'm, I'm all over the place. So I purposely turn mine down a bit. But I thought, you know what? It, everybody else is louder than me. I'll turn it up a little bit. Sounds normal and clear. Sounds good. Sounds excellent. Sounds good. Thank you. Got some audio engineers in the building. I appreciate y'all. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. David Piper, what's good? It's good to see you in here. So we got a lot of people in the building. My man, Stell Stryker, Cajun Kane, Randy, Bryce, Melissa. I think I saw Stephanie, my UM wife in the building. There she is. Always showing the family some love. Uh, Brandon Hurricane B, Josh Stevens. Uh, Crip, what's up, man? What's up? Good to see you, Crip. I do think I should call you tonight. I, uh, I ended up sleeping about... 14 hours, I think, 14 to 18 hours yesterday because uh, I thought I was getting sick again. But it happens every year around Christmas time because I, I told you guys, we're about to get into football talk, just small talking here for a second. I am a big time introvert. I, I do not go out very often. I stay cooped up in my studio making videos and playing video games. That's my life pretty much 24 seven. So around the holidays, around Christmas time, you know, I go to family gatherings, you know, spend time with the fam. And I end up being around a lot of kids because, you know, Uncle Coop is the cool uncle. Like, he likes Pokemon and video games. So I'm surrounded by kids, and they're all snotty nose and sneezing. And, you know, kids don't kids don't care about germs. You know, you know how it is. And usually I get sick around the holidays because I'm around all of the hooligans and all the kids. But uh, I, it seems like I'm fine. I think I'm all right. So I think we're good to go tonight. A uh, Coop, you sound like my wife, all cooped up and playing video games. That's the life, Kyle. That's the life, 100%. Uh, Texas A&M QB just broke the same bone. Emory broke 10 seconds into the game. That's rough. Man, I saw North Carolina lost to West Virginia, but you know, they didn't have Drake May. I saw Louisville was losing to USC 21-7. to These bowl games are going to be wild, and they're going to be super unpredictable just given all of the transfers and opt-outs and all the craziness. Uh, surround sound approved. Let's go. We got Amanda in the building. Jackson Johnson, Space Mountain. Uh, what would you say, uh, Cajun Kane, about Jakari saw my Instagram story. Did he like it or something? Is that how you knew? Good to be back on another Colin show. Can't believe it's the last game of 2023. Bro, it's actually over. It's actually officially over. 
It's wild, right? You guys want to know something funny? There's nothing in this. Uh, I, I just thought that it was a cool looking mug and I wanted to pretend like I was being a normal human being and drinking coffee out of it. Like, cause it's late and I'm trying to stay up for the show, you know? Uh, but I don't drink coffee. So this is, this is just pretend. I just wanted to look normal for a few minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> Everybody drinks coffee. I don't. So I just, I just had to play pretend. So the phone lines will be opened up here in just a bit. I want to give my little spiel. We're going to talk about uniform combos, team captains, weather. Uh, we're going to break down the stats just a little bit. I will provide my score prediction again, and then we'll open the phone line up. So as I said, it should be a really good time. It's going to be interesting, though, to see how it goes tomorrow. Uh, how, do you guys have to work tomorrow? Put Give me a yes or no. You don't have to give details of like what you do, but like a lot of people go back to work tomorrow. Not everybody gets two weeks off for Christmas. So a 2.15 p.m. kickoff on a Thursday afternoon is just wild. So many people that I talk to are going to have to miss the game tomorrow and or the live hangout because they have to work. You don't drink coffee? Me neither. Me neither. Uh, let's see. Sorry, not sorry. It's cool, Bryce. Uh, Stell Stryker will be at the game. Heck yeah. You got to represent up in New York, bro. Love it. David Piper has to work. Melissa has to work. Kane's fan 407 has to work. Look at that, man. That's crazy. Sucks, right? It sucks, man. Why couldn't it at least been at five? Five or six? Uh, Stephanie says, retired. <laughs> is it worth it? Is retired life, is it worth the wait, Stephanie? Bryce took tomorrow off. Uh, Hurricane B, seven days a week. I got Christmas Eve and day off, but that's it. Yeah, most people go back to work. Most people do. I'll be on with you for the last stream. The last one, Amanda. The last one. Fell, fell on your day off. That's awesome, Kyle. Heck yeah. So some people are going to get to. So we'll be live tomorrow. We'll do the normal live hangout for the game. 2.15 p.m. Eastern time is when they kick off. We'll react. I'll have the siren lubed up and ready to go. Uh, but I don't know, man. So many people are going to miss it. This is Do a live take. stream for the Orange Bowl. I Boy, will be live for it. On the side of your helmet. I sure will. Louisville looking like a wet fart out there. I know. And what's crazy is I had a little parlay, 850 Matthew, and I took USC. USC, I'm pretty sure, was the underdog going into that game. 850 Matthew, thank you for the $1.99, my man. I took USC. Straight up money line. I did. But we'll see. We'll see. 850 Matthew, thank you for the $1.99. I'll sit you atop your throne. Looking like a wet fart out there. Um, ugh, yikes. It's just going to be interesting because so many teams are going to want to go back and forth and talk trash about bowl games and stuff. But so many teams are playing with depleted rosters. Like it, it kind of feels weird to argue bragging rights. You know what I mean? Like, you, you still can brag. Like, you still got to come out and play. But, like, it feels so weird because you don't recognize most of these teams on the field. And Miami falls in the, the same category. We don't know what this Miami team is going to look like, and we're going to dive into it tonight. We're going to dive into it and talk about it. Uh, Coop, as a Georgia Tech fan, y'all better get another win for the ACC because Syracuse sucks, UNC wet the bed, and Louisville looks confused. Miami's going to have to bring one home. They are. I was going to send you a Canesware polo for Christmas, but I couldn't put your P.O. box in the delivery address. Weird. Mostly you don't have to send, you wouldn't have to send me a polo anyways. You do more than enough for me throughout the season. You don't need to do that, Melissa. All right. So let's get into the talk. Let's start talking ball here for a few minutes. The 7-5 and five Miami Hurricanes taking on the 6-6 six and six Rutgers Scarlet Knights tomorrow afternoon. Yes, tomorrow on ESPN at Yankee Stadium in the Pinstripe Bowl. I will have links for the game if you need it. It's going to be, again, on ESPN. If you need a link, if you don't have cable, or you're wanting to sneak and watch it on your phone, maybe at work, and you don't have YouTube TV or anything like that, 
just jump in my live stream, scroll to the very bottom of the description, and I'll have links for you guys. Now, the uniform combo has been announced for tomorrow. It is orange over white. So make of that um, as you will. I mean, if you're a superstitious person or, or you think that the uniform combo matters, this is what we're working with. Big surprise, right? <laughs> Never would have seen that one coming, Melissa. Never saw that one coming. Um, team captains for tomorrow. Now, this one is kind of humorous. I, ha I, I made a little comment about this. Team captains going into the game. Miami rocking with eight guys. Jacoby George, Jaden Davis, Ruben Hurricane Bain, Xavier Restrepo, Maui Noah, Cooper, Rivers, and Dean. So here's my theory. Okay. They walk out for the coin flip. Rutgers brings out probably four players. We bring out double. We have eight. We, we bring a whole squad out to midfield. So what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and intimidate Rutgers. We're going to assert our dominance before we even kick off by marching eight team captains out onto the field. So that's uh, my theory for that. Uh, but uh, that's, a, that's, a, a, that's a lot of team captains. It definitely is. Weather forecast for tomorrow. 2.15 p.m. kickoff on Thursday you know, 50s, low 50s, high, well, I say high chance of precipitation. I mean, we're looking at 50% roughly at kickoff, but rainy throughout the day before that. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a sloppy one or not. I don't know if they have the ability to cover that field or how that's going to work. It is open. So I guess we'll see, but there is a chance that it could be rainy. It's definitely going to be a little bit chilly. So we'll see if it's going to be sloppy at all in this game and probably one of the biggest talking points going into this one but i don't think that it's surprising is the fact that miami is now a two and a half point underdog against rutgers does that shock you guys yes or no are you shocked that miami is a two and a half point underdog to rutgers a team that went six and six their biggest win was probably against what maybe virginia tech like is that shocking at all because I want to talk about it just a little bit. Uh, Coop, my son wants to know your gamer channel. So my gaming channel, Amanda, is Positive Gamer Live. And that is all together, all one word, and that is on Twitch. That's on Twitch. So here's what I want to say. Miami being a two and a half point underdog does not surprise me at all. And I actually think that it makes perfect sense. And keep in mind that I am predicting Miami to win this game. But I think from an outside perspective, it makes perfect sense for a couple of reasons. Number one, Miami is starting a quarterback who has not seen a single snap in a game in the 2023 season. So that obviously brings a lot of uncertainty to that position. You don't really know what to expect out of this guy. Has he gotten, has he improved? Has he gotten better? Has he regressed? Does he look worse? Does he look about the same? We don't really know. And nobody knows what he looks like in Shannon Dawson's offense. We have no idea. Uh, transfers and opt-outs at key positions plus injuries for Miami. Rutgers, Melissa nailed it. Rutgers has all of their starters and we don't. Rutgers has tons of familiar faces on the field for this game. Guys that have been playing all season. They didn't have a lot of opt-outs. They didn't have a lot of transfers. Now, they did have a few, but especially at key positions, they have their guys. We're in a position to where we don't necessarily at each position. So just a lot of question marks for Miami, a lot of unknown. And also there's the fact that Rutgers does have a pretty solid defense. Uh, so we're going to see how they match up against the Canes. Now, some other people do bring up some good points. MS79 Canes fan says, yes, it is surprising because we've never lost to Rutgers. And that is also true. We've played Rutgers 11 times in total, and Miami has never lost to the Scarlet Knights. This would be the first time ever. And Miami's track record in bowl games, we all know it's not very good, right? So all I'm saying is I understand why they have Miami as underdogs. Miami has a lot to prove in this game. Mario Cristobal's first bowl game, 
as the head coach of the Miami Hurricanes with a lot of question marks. Right now, there's been no official depth chart that has been released for the Canes, so we'll see who we march out onto the field, but we have a pretty good idea. And I saw you guys mentioning Trevante Citizen. Running back Trevante Citizen has been cleared for tomorrow's game. Will he make an appearance? Maybe. I don't know. Because, you know, we're, we're still going to see guys like Fletcher. We're going to see Parrish. We're probably going to see A.J. Allen. Maybe we do find a way to get some of those younger guys in there to get them some snaps. I think it's just going to depend on the vibe and, you know, the flow of the game and how things are looking. Also, we should get to see Elijah Arroyo at the tight end position at times in this game. So finally get to see more of him. And then I also want to show you guys some stats going into this game. And this is going to explain a little bit more, I think, why they have Miami as an underdog. And I just want to show this here right quick. I'm going to let the, the dono play out from Buzz Talk with Face Sack. Let's see what he's got to say. It would be so awesome to see Citizen. That guy, man, Trevante's been dealing with season-ending injuries for like the past two years. I want to see this guy take the field and play. I really do. Imagine Kane Apocalypse if he did score a touchdown in this game. That would be huge, man. I, I really hope I really hope that he's able to to get some snaps tomorrow. I really do. Let me set uh Buzz Talk up here atop his throne. Boy, uh, touchdown Timmy's been going wild there lately, hasn't he? I know you've probably been seeing it. <laughs> Cause I know you you you've brought him up a couple of times in my stream. He's been uh <clears throat> An interesting character the, the past few weeks. Uh, that's that's probably the best way to to describe it. Yeah, I can't wait to see him either, Crip. Can't wait to see him. Eric says 24-21, Canes win. Okay, I like it. I do think it will be a close matchup. I do. Uh, it will be wet. It's raining on and off right now, and there's a 60% chance of rain tomorrow in the Bronx. It's a nice feel, but it'll be a little slick. So we might have to lean on that run game a bit. And, I mean, we're going to be in a position with Jakari where we have a mobile quarterback. So that could be very helpful. Now, Rutgers is in the same boat. Rutgers runs the ball extremely well. Uh, passing the ball, not so much. So they're going to have this to lean on that run take. game. They have a mobile quarterback. So where do you? I think it'll be what a fun game. Portal should open up after bowls and before playoff. December 31st would be a good day for it to open. Yeah. You, Fans pay dollar to watch their team, and we are watching mostly backups for many teams. Opting out as BS emo. I agree. I think I think that the window for that should absolutely change. I think that's a fantastic idea. And I don't know if there's some, some other stuff that happens or that goes down and there's like reasoning for it, because there could be. You know, like there's could be some other reasons for it, but I think that makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? Like that way, you everybody can focus on the bowl game, and it's tough for the coaches because they're having to try to recruit the transfer portal and and make contact and and do all these different things, and then also prepping for a bowl game. Like I know there's a dead period and all this stuff, but still, it just it just seems like it, it seems like that it should be that. And then open up all the portal stuff. I don't know. I don't know, man. It, it is kind of wild. Buzz Talk, I appreciate the 10, man. Excellent idea, in my opinion. Do they have anyone who can tackle Fletcher? Put him on a stretcher. Fletcher will not be denied tomorrow. Let me tell you, he's, he's going to be fun to watch. Let me show you guys a direct side-by-side -side comparison here with Miami and Rutgers. Now, let me know if this is too small. If you guys can't see it, we can zoom in. Uh, just remember, I mean, it's obvious, right? Red is Rutgers. Green is Miami. So you can see some stats here. And this is what's very interesting about both of these teams. And the very first thing you're going to notice is probably passing yards per game. Uh, Rutgers quarterback is completing roughly 47.8% of his passes this season nine touchdowns and eight interceptions now he's mobile he's got some legs he likes to run but he's not very accurate and they don't see a lot of success through the air 142 yards average per game passing yards that's pitiful the other stat that is really going to stand out here is probably also passing yards allowed per game we're giving up an average of 227 
Rutgers is only giving up roughly 175, which ranks pretty high, like number 11 in the country, I believe. So not a lot of teams are able to throw the ball on Rutgers. But what makes this game really, really interesting for me is this. Let me think if I can can find a way to explain it. Um, Miami defends the run really well. We know this. Not many teams were able to find success on the ground against us this season. Now, there were a few here and there, but overall, Miami's run defense is solid. Rutgers' strong suit is running the ball. It, it's honestly about the only thing they can do. So they're going to have to lean on that. They, they, they rely on their run game. So here's the big question mark going into this game, especially if it's going to be rainy and sloppy and both teams are going to have to run the ball more. Will Miami be able to still have a really solid run defense in this game given the personnel that we're going to have on the field? And what I mean by that is Miami has done a good job stopping the run all season. We don't have James Williams. We don't have Cam Kenshins. We don't have Leonard Taylor. Now, there are other good guys on that defense, but all I'm saying is the team could look a little different tomorrow, both defensively and offensively, because I, obviously the key to winning this game, at least on paper and watching all the previous game, all the previous games, is literally just going to be slow down Rutgers' run game. And if Jakari plays a halfway decent game, he does not have to be a, a Heisman quarterback in his first game in 2023 in the bowl game. Jakari just has to play a decent game. We stop their run game. It's game over. Right? At least it appears that way. So with that being said, I mean, I feel pretty comfortable with a Miami victory in this one. I uh, My only concern would be players or coaches not being mentally present. And what I mean by that is, is being there in the moment and focusing on this game, not focus too much on the future and, and looking ahead because we're really excited about 2024. But again, this is Mario Cristobal's first bowl game as the head coach of the Miami Hurricanes. He needs this win. We've not won a bowl game in a long time, and this would be great for his resume at Miami. So again, looking at the stats, man, Jakari, just play decent, bro. Stop Rutgers' run game. They can't pass to save their freaking lives. We win the game. Their running back had over 1,000 rushing yards this season. Now, I understand the level of competition is different here, but just to give you a comparison, their running back rushed for 1,099 yards and seven touchdowns. Our leading rusher this season was Parrish at 579 yards, literally half. Now, to be fair, Miami you know, showed some love to multiple running backs. You brought in Fletcher, you have A.J. Allen, you even have Chris Johnson getting some carries at some point. And they kind of, he, he's their bell cow, right? Like he's the guy that's getting the bulk of the carries. But still a pretty solid running back and put up some good numbers. This is what it takes. We stopped their run. To where do you it's over. On the side of your it's head. over. I do not. Players should NT risk injury for a bowl. Why play the last few games then? Any player getting drafted high is going to have enough tape early on anyways. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and I know we're going back and forth. I see the back and forth with Hoodie Girl and Buzz Talk. I'm here for it. I like it. And I, I'm just going to be honest. I feel like you could argue both sides. There, There is a little bit of an argument for both sides, in my opinion. Buzz Talk, thank you for the five, my man. I appreciate you. Like I said, I see both. Uh, Rutgers' only weapon on offense is their running back. Bingo, Jason. That That's literally it. Shut him down. Uh, it, it's game over. And Liberty City, boy, I also agree. Rutgers don't have anything that the Canes can't stop. Literally, can I be honest with you guys? Uh, and you you know I've, I've not sugarcoated anything this season. I predicted Miami to go 7-5. and five. And I predicted multiple losses this season, even through the weeks. I just don't see how Miami loses this game unless Jakari has not improved at all and if we're just, as I said, not mentally present. I know that that probably sounds silly to a lot of you, but there are a lot of distractions and things. You know, there's all the quarterback talk and stuff going on with Cam Ward and, 
and Will Howard and KJ Jefferson and the transfer portal in general and just all the stuff going on, the travel, it's it's a lot further to go for Miami than it is for Rutgers and just a lot of things. As long as the team is mentally present, no stupid coaching blunders. Jakari plays decent. They stop the run. These are things that should be pretty easy. Should be pretty easy. So with that being said, I do have the Canes winning. In case you missed the preview video. I have Miami winning, but the, I don't have them blowing Rutgers out of the water, bro. I do think there are going to be some issues. I, I mean, I can just think about it. You can practice, 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 but a lot of these guys haven't been getting a ton of reps throughout the season. It's game day. Game day is a little different than practice. You're going to hear only good things from the practices. That's coach speak, player speak, whatever you want to call it. Not being negative. I'm just saying I do think that it could be close. I have 24 to 20, but I hope Miami beats them by 21 plus, honestly. And if you did miss my preview video, I brought on Mama Coop. That's right. Mama Coop made her first appearance on a show. Is that Tropical? Wait a minute. Is Tropical in the building? Tropical, what's up? I'm at an ugly sweater party. Gonna head out soon and catch up with y'all later. Tropical this is what it takes. will be here. Have fun at the ugly the sweater party. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to one of those. When and if I can get on the line, can we talk CFP? Sure. Talk, we can talk CFP. Yeah, tonight, obviously the focus is the pinstripe bowl. But if, if you want to bring up the college football playoffs, we, we can talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the two, Tug. I appreciate that. Who's that in your profile picture? Is that? I can't tell. It's so small on my screen. That looks like a Kansas City Chiefs player, but I can't tell who. Appreciate the two, my man. Thank you for that. We'll open up the phone line here in just a few minutes. The phone number will be on the left-hand side of your screen. 865-229-4131. dollars score prediction on the line. This is what it So we are going to open it up. To where do you on the side of your helmet? Given how things played out with QB, I still wonder why Jack didn't get one single snap against BC when we were up by so much. Staff knew TVD was going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know that they had knew that they had knew that for a while, right? So it's an excellent excellent question, Pensa Kane. And what's even more interesting here is still, and it's why I talk about all the distractions. As far as I know, and th this is not like me playing insider. As far as I know, Mario Cristobal still believes that Cam Ward will be a Miami Hurricane. And I've also heard that really the only people that know anything about the situation are Mario Cristobal and Shannon Dawson. I've even heard that fellow coaches don't even know all of the specifics with that. Now, I know that might sound a little weird, thinking of kind of leaving those guys in the dark, but you guys know Mario runs a tight ship. He doesn't like a lot of things getting out there. And Dawson is the OC and quarterback's coach, so it makes sense that right now, just kind of between him and Dawson, as far as the specifics of exactly what's going down with that. I'm in that crowd that believes that Cam Ward is choosing between Miami and the NFL not Miami and Florida State in the NFL. I think that it's I think it's Miami or NFL. But it is interesting because again, like we talked about, if you bring in Cam Ward, why would Jakari stay unless Jakari just loves Miami that much? And I like Jakari. I really do. I just don't know. Would would he be willing to sit behind a Cam Ward next year, knowing he only plays if Cam Ward goes down? Because Cam Ward's not going to come here to compete for a starting role. He's coming here to play. And they, a, a veteran quarterback will not transfer to a school where he's not guaranteed playing time. There's just no way. At that point, go to the NFL or go somewhere else. So I don't know. What, what's interesting is this. You guys know that I have stood firm in the paint in believing that Jakari Brown will transfer after this season. I'm starting to not really know how I feel about that. And the reason I say that is because what someone actually does and what they say can be two totally different things. But everything I've heard is that Jakari Brown wants to stay at Miami. I don't know if that means that he, he does 
but he wants to. Like, I, I, guys, I'm talking really, really wants to stay at Miami. So maybe he does. Maybe you bring in a Cam Ward or a veteran guy, and Jakari says, you know what? I really believe that once this guy is gone, it's my turn. It's my shot. And maybe he does ride it out one more year. I don't know. It, it, the, it, the question still remains. Why did he choose the red shirt 2023? Was it really because he just wanted to prep for 2024? But that seems so far off. And there's so many variables that play a part. Right? Like, again, we're talking about bringing in a veteran transfer quarterback. Well, that, that changes things, doesn't it? I don't know, man. But I just I he, he wants to stay at Miami. I'll just say that. Jakari Brown wants to stay at Miami. So we'll see. But I had 24 to 20. Miami dub. And Mama Coop came on the show and she predicted something somewhat similar. But she had a Miami dub 20 to 13. She put her that's but she signed her name down here. Uh, so we're gonna see who's closer. There's a steak dinner on the line for me versus my mom's score prediction. So we're gonna see. Oh, that was that was Patrick Mahomes. Gotcha. My guy, Pat Mahomes. <laughs> uh, how do you call in Jackson Johnson? The phone line will be opened up here in just a moment, and you'll call the number on the left-hand side of your screen. Don't be shy. We just have a good time. You can give your score prediction and bounce, or we can talk about the game for a minute. It's whatever you want to do. Who do I have winning the Natty? Washington. This is what it takes. Yep. To where do you? On the side of your helmet. Washington. Co-op. As some where say Miami around here. Where ACC dies. Join Big 12 with GT. No, I honestly wish every team would go eind. Replace conference title games with bigger bowls hmm. that determine CFP ranking. For example, top four teams. Interesting. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's going to be really weird to see how this thing shapes up. You know, you got Florida State suing the ACC. You got the ACC suing Florida State. It's going to get real weird. That's the only thing I know for sure about this whole thing. It's going to get very, very weird real soon. Buzz Talk, thank you for the 10. I also see another 5 and a 2 coming through. Get an auto buy and the other 8. Other eight play bowls to determine rankings. Then you have other normal bowls too. See, the thing is, is I don't hate this idea. I don't. I just don't think that they're going to be willing to mix it up that much. I am a fan, I think, of the idea though. I do actually think I'm a fan of that possibly. I think so. And, you know, I know saying, you know, going independent, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't really know. The ACC is not going to want to back down and just dissolve and not become a thing anymore because, well, then there's, you know, no money. So I, I don't know. This is what it takes. We'll see. We'll see. He to may stay. Balls out in New York and thinks twice. Possibly. Get an auto buy and the other eight play bowls to determine rankings. I, ca I really kind of like that, it though. To where huh. you? On the side of your helmet. Then you have other normal bowls, too. Hmm. Don't hate it. Don't hate it. I'll be honest. Thank you for the love, Buzz Talk. Showing Coop massive love tonight. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you, my man. Hey, hey, good idea. Good idea. I think it's going to be Washington. Like I said, or down in the south, Washington. Washington's going all the way, guys. Uh, what if he balls out? Why wouldn't he be QB1? He knows the system has been here a minute. I'm not following your line of thought. Here's why. The reason why I would say he wouldn't be QB1 is because Mario Cristobal has already shown that he's looking for a veteran QB because we offered Cam Ward. Why would we host Cam Ward and Will Howard, guys that only have one year of eligibility remaining, if the idea was that Jakari would start over them next year? Now, if we don't bring in a veteran guy, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, we do still also just need depth, so I think that Miami would still approach a guy that has, you know, two, three plus years of eligibility remaining. But the reality is Mario hosted Cam Ward. So that shows, and th this is why there's so much confusion here with it. Just Kari stay. Does he go? What's going on with the quarterback room? They want a veteran. They've already showed that. 
no veteran quarterback will come to ride the bench because you just ruined your chances. Why right? you stayed in college to sit another year? You wouldn't do that when the NFL is also a real option that's on the table. So I'm looking at it from what Mario is doing. <laughs> You're already tired of Cam Ward. I, and I understand. I understand. I do think there is a real possibility that whatever is going to happen has already played out and there's just been no announcement yet. And what I mean by that is nothing in particular. Maybe he goes to Miami. Maybe he doesn't. I actually think a decision has probably already been made, though. And if he is going to Miami, I could see a world where they wait till after the bowl game so the focus can be on the bowl game. It's possible. It's possible. Why in the world is Coop and Hayes on at the same time? This ain't fair. <laughs> no face, what's up? I actually addressed this at the beginning of the stream. I'm never live on Wednesdays. Never. This is not my day. And no one has set days. Everybody can go live whenever they want. But everybody kind of has their typical like, oh, this guy's live on this day. This guy's live on this day. I'm usually live on Fridays and Saturdays. I'm a weekend guy. But i am kind of been forced to be live tonight because Miami plays tomorrow. And I always stream the night before Miami plays. So here we are. I think Hayes is, I think Coach Hayes is live talking about the pinstripe bowl as well, right? Him and V12. Love Coach Hayes, man. Love Coach Hayes. But yeah, I'm normally not live tonight. Six ring canes, three live canes are live. This is, it's so weird. Like I said, this is not my normal. This is not my normal day that I'm live. You really think Miami is going to stop the portal QB search based on one good game by Jakari Brown? And that's also a, another really good take, HR. One game against a 6-6 six and six Rutgers team doesn't tell you all you need to know about a player. Now, the coaching staff, you know, has been watching Jakari practice. They know what he really looks like, and they have some expectations for him. We don't know. We've not got to see Jakari at all this season in any environment, practice or game. So that's that's the thing. So I totally get it, Amanda. I totally get it. Uh, but the coaching staff has showed that they do want a veteran guy. So there's a lot of questions. A lot of questions. Coop has four years of eligibility after red shirting for this year to YouTube. Let's give Coop the reins. I would look like, bro, I would look like Alex Mirabal out there. I, I am one inch taller than Mirabal. Bro, the, the offensive lineman at Miami, I wouldn't be able to see over the top of him. It would be... I would literally just have to just, just send it over the top of him. I'd have to just send it over the top of him. And typically, it would probably be deflected by my own offensive lineman. You know? Like, I it it would be bad. You think I'm going to throw over, over Carpenter, the transfer we got at center? Heck no. Coop ain't tall enough. Ain't no way. Mac Brown lost today. Yes. Can we all get a round of applause for Mac Brown losing to West Virginia today? I don't care that he didn't have Drake May. I don't care. Seeing a frown on Mac Brown's face puts a smile on Coop's face every time. You guys know how I feel about him. I'll take you hitting our lineman instead of watching TVD throw interceptions. Oh, my gosh. Coop be like XR7 down there somewhere. Just throw it up. Mr. Sticky Hands will, will come away with it. Absolutely. It would all have to be throws. It would have to be behind the line of scrimmage. So we're going to have to throw like wide receiver screens. I'm going to have to to dump it off to the running back. That, that's going to be it. What's your beef with Mac? Uh, he needs to go to the retirement home. That's that's my beef with Mac. That, that, oh wait, he has that, that shit-eating grin on his face every time he beats Miami, and I can't stand it. I can't I, I I cannot stand Mac Brown. I can't. He he gets handsy with coaches. It's weird. It's awkward. I eh. mm. I take any performance with a grain of salt this game. Wouldn't be too impressed with someone scorching Rutgers in a meaningless bowl game. Let's not be the typical overexcited Miami fans. I agree with that take too, Josh. I agree with that take as well, hundred percent. Regardless of what JB does, we need depth. Absolutely. So if Cam Ward is not going to come to Miami and we took too long for Will Howard because now Will Howard is still not 100% on USC. You're seeing now Will Howard look at some other schools. If those two aren't takes, 
Who's left? KJ Jefferson is looking at UCF. Then Miami has to look at it and say, okay, you open this thing up for Jakari and Emery, most likely, with Judd sitting back and learning. And then you bring in one other transfer portal quarterback who's younger. That's probably what you have to go with. But again, again, I don't have any inside information here. Word on the street is that Mario Cristobal firmly believes Cam Ward will be a Miami Hurricane. That doesn't guarantee anything. It doesn't mean that that will actually happen. But based on the way that he's approaching this and what he's been doing makes it seem like he firmly believes that. So we'll see. We'll find out soon. Would you put Cajun Kane? The UPS guy down there somewhere. I'll get it to somebody. I'll get it to somebody. Yeah, I can't stand that Mike Brown grin. Can't stand it. You're on double-digit calls already. I tell people tonight's the night because it's not my normal night of being live. So we're going to have far less people in here. So if you want to get in on the phone line, tonight is the night to make it happen. You like KJ better than Ward? I like KJ quite a bit, and but there's not been a lot of communication with him. So, like, I think KJ could be a backup option, but he's not even option one, two, or maybe even three. He's he's further down the list, it seems. Getting way ahead, but how many dubs do you give Miami next year if they land Cam? Now, we're about to open up the phone line, guys. We I gave my whole spiel about the bowl game. I gave my score prediction 24 to 20, Miami. Miami is a two-and-a-half point underdog, but I do want to address this right quick. I am probably, in 2024, going to be leaning towards nine wins. So we went five and seven. We got a new OC and DC and some different position coaches in 2023. I upped my five-win expectation to seven wins, keeping in mind that what I want to happen and what I predict to happen are two totally different things. I set fandom and emotion to the side, and we nailed it. I didn't get all the games right, but I predicted seven and five. We went seven and five. I think in 2024, I add two more wins to that. So we went five and seven, seven and five. I now push and say we probably win nine. And you know, you already get it because you said way ahead. Don't hold me to that. That could very well change. Injuries can happen before the season even starts. Coaching changes, a lot of different things. But right now, I would say nine wins. Nine wins probably. So another Another small step forward and more positive progress. We're trending upwards. We brought in a number three ranked recruiting class. But remember, all those guys are going to be freshmen. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Who are we losing to, though? But see, aha, aha, see, here's the thing. We play this game every year. Right, so uh, we're, like I said, I'm about to open up the phone line. When I predicted seven and five, everyone said, "Coop, there's no way that I can pick five teams we lose to on this schedule." And I said, "Yeah, it, it's absolutely. This is 2023 schedule, by the way." I know, and I got you, Bryce. I know, I know, I know. Um, the reality is, you just don't know. We don't know exactly what we're going to look like, and we don't know what the teams on the 2024 schedule are going to look like. Again, this is 2023. So, so many people said, there's no way I can pick five teams we lose to. And I said, I agree. It is very tough to pick those five teams. I would say, I would say if I'm looking at the 2024 schedule, Miami still has an uh oh game. Until they prove otherwise, we always have an uh oh, typically conference game. So, an uh oh ACC game. Um, we're going to lose to to one of the big boys. Let's, let's, let's just humor it real quick before I open the phone line. Because we have a favorable schedule in 2024. At least it seems that way at this point in time. You know, it's it, it's not bad. You know, we, we open with the Gators in the swamp, which could potentially be scary, but the Gators are trending down. You know, they're not looking that good. Florida A&M at home, better not lose it. Ball State at home. Better not lose it. USF, again, I'm saying this in 2023, should be fine. Traveling to California, Cal doesn't appear to be that good, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Georgia Tech, I mean, we had won if we had taken the knee. Yes, it was close. 
Uh, hopefully, Louisville starts to trend downwards. They like to play the transfer portal game, and they're pretty good at it. Duke is going to be the Manny Diaz rematch. He got Malik Murphy, the quarterback from Texas, out of the transfer portal. Florida State, I think we can handle them at hard rock. So Yeah, see? But here's the thing. Every single year, I'm not being negative. You know I'm just playing. You know I'm playing devil's advocate here, Bryce. Every single year, we can talk ourselves into undefeated. I have to set the fandom to the side, and I would say right now, nine wins comfortably. Nine wins. That's where I would be at, but we'll, we'll dive deeper. It's, it's a good question. It's fun to discuss. It, it's very fun to discuss. Uh, Pensa Kane coming through with the five, and then we're going to open the phone line up, guys. So get the phone ready. Put it on speed dial, 865-229-4131, and I'll get you guys in here. Uh, if you're new, if anybody is new here, uh, you call in and predict the score for the game, and if you get it right tomorrow, you win 300 bucks. I'll PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, whatever you want to do. I'll get the cash this in your hands. Yeah, I'll take that, Bryce. That's a that's a step in, in the right direction. Scenario sure. I'm hoping for. JB Balls out. Has a great showing and gives Miami some leverage with all portal QBs. Mm. Right now, we look needy because we are. That's fair. That's fair. We, we are kind of in a position where we, we look a little needy, don't we? That's very true. That, that That's a good point, Pensa Kane. Thank you for the five. Very, very good point. And, and next year is the expanded playoffs. So there are going to be some extra possibilities in 2024. So it would be huge to have a good year. It'd be huge to have a good year. Uh, Melissa, yep. I remember Melissa also had seven and five. Just mixed up Georgia Tech and Clemson games outcomes. I, I want to add one thing real quick and this is going to be long forgotten by the time next year rolls around this is always my approach to full season predictions i never hold anyone accountable or make fun of them for full season predictions and what i mean by that is it, it's it's kind of literally impossible to really know what to expect with the full season prediction because when you make those, you've not seen a single team take the field yet. How can you realistically predict every single game for an entire football season before either team has ever even taken the field? So you do get bragging rights and brownie points if you get it right or if you're close. If somebody gets it way wrong, I don't really harp on them that much. Because who really knows? And also, I think that it's fair to say that your week-to-week -week predictions obviously are allowed to change. Mine are always different. Always. In the offseason, I predicted Miami to lose to Clemson. Game week, in my week-to-week -week predictions, I predicted Miami to beat Clemson because we had seen both teams play some games. So they're two separate entities, your full season prediction and your game-by-game -game, week to week predictions. And don't harp on people too much for their full season predictions. But if they get it right, yeah. Yeah, clap it up because you were able to successfully or closely predict an entire season before you saw the teams take the field. But it's kind of like playing the lottery, if we're being honest. You, you kind of just have to pick and base it off of what you think they'll do and what they did the previous season, which is very hard to do. Very hard to do. Coop, is Ward coming to Miami? Um, Mario Cristobal seems to believe so. But I don't have any inside information. Uh, he's keeping that in-house and very few people know for sure there have been rumors about cam ward hanging out with jacoby george and some other players on some instagram live streams and stuff and you know a lot of people saying he he's already chosen miami they've got the nil paperwork done they're just waiting till after the bowl game i can't confirm any of this i don't know but it appears to be that he he believes that he will be so we'll see pence Kane, thank you for the five my man i appreciate you uh, let's get it. Let's get the phone lines open up. Let's get it popping tonight. Let's get started. Um, give me two seconds here. Hold on. And by the way, before I get the phone line open up, I hope that the old Santa Claus brought you guys everything you wanted for Christmas. I hope that you didn't get coal like I did. 
And I'm not taking my tree down yet. I will not. You'll just have to fight me. I'm not. I am not taking. Can you, can you see it? I'm not taking it. I'm not taking it down yet. Mario can never lose to Manny. We cannot lose to Manny DS. No, sir. That cannot happen. That would be, oh, that'd be a slap in the face. Big time. That can't happen. So I got pen and paper in hand. I'm ready to open up that phone line. Last chance to win $300 in 2023, guys. 2023 final call-in stream, final score prediction contest. This is it, man. This is it. So here we go. Let's get it started. Phone line is open. Well, well, well. Once again, first caller on the show. <laughs> hey, that's that's two or three times this season, right? It's the second, it's the second time, and that was seventy-four redials while you kept talking <laughs> and talking and talking. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that I like to talk a lot and that I tend to talk in circles and say the same things over and over again. Would you agree? Well, I don't think you're saying the same thing over <laughs> again. It's more so like, all right, we're going to get the phone lines open. So I start redialing oh. and then it goes into like 10 more other conversations. I, I was just trying to see if I could catch you like and, and see whose side you would take on that statement. So you passed, you passed. Oh, I'm team Coop. I got you. Did you get your your uh, card by chance? From did me? you send me something? I sure did. Oh, I'll have to check my. I don't check my mail very often. Oh, oops. Okay, uh, just kidding. Gotta, just kidding. You gotta. If you, you gotta check. tell me if you're gonna send me something. I will. I will go check my mail um, later this evening. I, I I was I was just kidding. But if you check your mail, there may or not, may not be something. So, um, <laughs> I was going to send you something, but the, it's hard to send things to the PO box from like an actual, like online site. I'd have to get it sent here and then mail it myself mm, and going gotcha. to the post office is really annoying. Uh, yeah. Especially around Christmas time. Forget that. Ugh. Yeah. So I want to know how you feel confidence wise going into this one with Miami being underdogs and all the question marks on the roster. But Rutgers not being that great of a football team that does one thing really well, but that seems to be about it, but they have a good physical defense. What do you think? Some people think that it's disrespectful to have Miami as underdogs. I am i don't really care about the underdogs, Vegas odds, whatever. I, I don't really have expectations. A lot of our, our, our key guys obviously aren't going to be there. You mm -hmm. know, I, I have faith in Jakari, but again, he hasn't played all season. So we don't know how he how he looks in this Dawson offense. Um, unfortunately, I'll be at work, so I won't be able to watch mm. it live. But I mean, I think it's just going to be fun. We're going to get to see a lot of the young guys play and kind of see what our our future holds. Um, you know, going into the next season, and everyone's got to take this game with a grain of salt. Oh um, yeah, definitely. But I, I I think it'll be fun. Well, well I mean, I think it's going to come down to the run game because it looks like the the weather is not going to be great and it's going to be a wet field regardless if it's raining during actual game time or not. So. If we can start, if we can stop Rutgers' running game, I, I think we have a good chance to win. Oh yeah, and I think that's kind of been my approach that I'm trying to embrace going into this game. Is of course we want to win it, and I know that it's very important for Mario. But from a fan perspective, I'm trying to just look at it as this will be fun to watch some of these guys play that we haven't got to see play much this season. Oh, I agree. So, it's it's the future. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of a look ahead, as you said, into the future. So, yeah, that, that will be kind of fun to watch that unfold. And I am very curious, obviously. I mean, all eyes are on Jakari Brown to see if he has improved and, and to see how he looks. So, yeah, it, it literally it, it will be fun. I think it will be a fun game. I think so, and I'm excited for I'm, I'm excited for Jakari. Uh, hopefully he balls out because – I think I think I can speak for most Miami or all Miami fans. Well, we want him to succeed. You know, mm -hmm. he he hasn't had his chance yet this year. So hopefully, you know, he he does well, and uh, and then hopefully we get a quarterback announcement after that. Because <laughs> 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 regardless what people think about Cam Ward and should Jakari be our starter next year and all of that, regardless of all that, we need QB room depth. Mm -hmm. There there needs to be an addition to the quarterback room, regardless of how JB plays. Yeah, you can't it, go into next year with just Dakari, Emery, and then true freshman Judd. Like it's just that's not sufficient. 
Yeah, that, that, that's a pretty scary scenario. And, you know, we almost ended up in a really bad spot this season with TBD not playing, and then Emery basically breaks his arm, and then Jakari's red-shirted. So it could have been a very bad situation. And TBD was still kind of playing Yoko banged up and try hurt. and get me in lol. It's me, Big Red. Um, so, I mean, yeah, a TVD looked a little bit better at the end of the season, but in, in my opinion, once we got that sixth win and then Emery got injured, like, I don't know why you just don't put that Jakari play at this point. There wasn't at that point, there wasn't enough, there wasn't enough games left for him to, to blow his red shirt. So I, I didn't get why we didn't give him some reps, but you know, I'm not part of the coaching staff. I'm just a fan from the outside, but. Yeah. And because of that, it creates a lot of conspiracy theories of, you know, oh, is, yeah. it, is it because he didn't want to play? Is it because he's not good enough to play? What is it? And we come up with all these different ideas and stuff. And nobody really knows the exact specifics except for him and probably a handful of other people. So My my assumption is now that we're looking at it and, you know, the hindsight is twenty twenty, the staff maybe knew that TVD was going to transfer. And so they were just like, all right, let's finish it out with TVD. Let's not risk Jakari getting injured because – that's going to be our bowl game guy. I mean, that's the only that's thing true. I could think of. I don't know if they were looking ahead to other things, but. I mean, I could see that because, yeah, I mean, think then anything can happen. We saw what happened with Emory. Imagine Jakari does come in against Boston College, whether it be for the whole game or, or second half or late in the game, does get injured. As you said, they probably had an idea that Tyler was transferring. I don't think that was out of the blue. That wasn't a sudden thing that he decided and it shocked them. Emery is is obviously still recovering. You got to play the walk on at that point. And again, this game is a big deal for Mario. He wants to win his first, first bowl. bowl game with the Miami Hurricanes. Yep. So the, I think that scenario makes sense. I think that's a, a level headed, uh, common sense approach to it. I could believe that. Yep. Again, we all just we're all just going to speculate. Yeah. You know, no one's no one's got the inside track. Mario plays it so close to the vest. So. I, I, there's probably people within the program who don't even know what's going on. So we just got to wait and see. And I think that's the case with the Cam Ward stuff. I think, yep. uh, and again, cause you know, I, I don't, I don't play the, the insider thing, but even a few people I have talked to where I'm like, no, like nobody really knows. Are you sure? And they're talking about other coaches on the staff, not knowing for sure exactly the stuff with the Cam Ward situation. Their focus is preparing for the bowl game you know, they've been working on recruiting and everything like that. And it seems to just be Mario and Dawson. So it's it's an interesting situation for sure. The one thing I think we can all agree on, and this applies to most coaches, but Mario doesn't operate on the fans' timeline. And he if, shouldn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if Just because the fans are, are protesting and saying, we, we want an announcement right now, he, do, he doesn't care. His job is to do what's best for the team and prepare the team. And it doesn't matter what we want as far as when we want announcements and when we want news to come out. He's not going to care, and we shouldn't expect him to care about that. So more of it is a situation, I think, with the Cam Ward stuff. And, yeah, I'm a YouTuber, so I get on here and run my mouth about it and make a bunch of hypothetical videos. But we, we kind of set ourselves up for it because we keep wanting it to be now. When yeah. that was never the case. It was it probably wasn't going to be announced a week ago or two weeks ago, but we keep thinking and wanting it to be, and that's just not the case. This this guy in the chat, Richard, I don't know that he was listening to what I was saying because the take that he's uh, – what he's implying is completely not what I'm saying. <laughs> I disagree with Collar totally. This game is very important for young players to excel. It's important to go 8-5 and five if you're a true can't – well, wait, I mean – isn't that basically what you said? I, I, I yeah, I, I, where is he right. getting the, I, me saying that this game isn't important? I'm not sure. I, I, I just Maybe. said, I just said that I don't have expectations. There's going to be a lot of young guys playing, but I'm excited to see what they can do. I, I'm not sure where he didn't, where he got the idea that I said this game doesn't mean anything. It might have just calling been a, out my calling out it, my fandom. I don't it, know where that came from. <laughs> it might have just been a misunderstanding, or maybe I said something weird that that made him think that that was the take. It's possible. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna kick it over to the official score prediction cam. Fingers crossed that it still works. 
We've not used it in a couple weeks. All right. Did you did Jordan break it? We're in business. Nope. Kim K yes. is still here. Still operating <laughs> and functioning here. All right, Melissa. Last opportunity in 2023. For actually let me change one thing on the camera. It is not focusing, but that's an easy fix. There we go. All right. Last opportunity in 2023 to put this $300 in your pocket. What's it going to be? Well, if I don't get the score prediction right, I'm hoping Mama Coop gets it so that you have to buy her a steak dinner. Fair. But I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to roll with uh 30 to 17 Miami. 3017 Miami victory. Let's lock it in. Make it officially official here. All right. Now, it's funny because I wanted to put a higher score. I just couldn't get myself to do it. And that that's close to mine. I had 24, you have 30. I want to come out and uh, to be honest with you, I want to say like 35 to 10 or something like that. I just so many question marks, Melissa. I just I don't know. Yeah, but I, I like mean, it. I was like, I I asked Hoodie Mom. I was like, Hey, Mom, give me some give me some numbers for the score prediction. So she threw a a few options out there, and I was like, All right, that's what I'm gonna roll with. All right, thirty to seventeen, Miami victory. I think most Canes fans would be happy with that. Melissa, yeah, just, just want to get the dub. Exactly, exactly. I appreciate the call. I wish you didn't have to to work tomorrow though. You don't get to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, and I hope maybe it won't be busy and I can flip the TV on in the office or at least pop into your stream for a few minutes because if I'm streaming it from my phone, I can't also be on your on your live at the same time. So I'll figure right. something out. I'll pop in to say hi at some point. Well, all you have to do at the very least is if you pop in the live stream, just look at the rage meter. If it's low, it's probably good. If it's high, it's bad. That That'll pretty much sum it up for you. There. Well, hopefully the rage meter is chilling tomorrow. I think it will be. I do. If not, if if San and Dawson needs some offensive play calls, he knows what co he to call. Exactly. Bingo. We got the halfback pass dialed up and ready to go. Listen, Derrick Henry threw a pretty decent halfback pass, man. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta, you know, it happens in real life. Yeah. We gotta get the Canes on this. So. I know. I All know. Right, we'll see. We'll see who the next caller is gonna be. <laughs> All right, Melissa. I appreciate you very much. Thanks, Coop. Have a good All one. Right, you too. Bye. All right, bye bye. Yeah, it's funny, man. Melissa had tweeted about that where uh, uh, the Titans did that. They did a little halfback pass with with Derrick Henry, and they got a touchdown. And we were both like, "They took that! They took that out of our virtual playbook." But boy, that uh, when we tried the halfback pass with Mark Fletcher in the virtual season, uh, that man could not throw the ball to save his life. Parrish was a much more capable running back when it comes to to throwing the ball so i saw some people say uh, they're trying to get in tug thank you for the two my this man i takes. appreciate that to big red i'll get help. you in here bro don't worry grabby mac losing was great mario needs a vet qb to continue upward trend to stack classes and grab top qbs fair yep can't send cheesecake to p.o box because they use ups to overnight sent you an email check it I can send you an e-card and you order it. Oh, okay. So you were serious about that. Oh. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I should have known you were being serious, but I thought you were just kind of making a little joke about the cheesecake thing. You, did you guys see the, the cheesecake debacle? My, my, my three-incher? My, my three-inch cheesecake? Oh. That... A three-inch piece of cheesecake, let me tell you, is not enough. That's unacceptable. Tucci, I will check my email. I will be in touch. Uh, my bad if I missed that. Maybe it got lost in the sauce somewhere and slid through the cracks. Tucci, thank you for the Big Ten straight to the PayPal. I'll sit you atop the throne there with Buzz Talk. Thank you for the love, my man. And we'll, we'll figure something out. Just know that you don't have to do that, by the way. You definitely don't have to do that. But we'll, we'll figure something out. I appreciate that. I will sit you up here with Buzz Talk. My man Tucci. I'm still mad. 
I'm still mad about that three inch cheesecake, bro. Like I'm I'm serious. I was mad for like two or three days. And so many times I've been told it's like let's get the phone line open back up. <clears throat> Any news on the QB yet? No. No, and, and probably not expected until after the bowl game at this point. Probably not. Probably not. My man, Stealth Striker, what's up? Nothing much, how about you? Uh, just chilling. Basically sitting around, waiting for the game tomorrow. Are, are you going to get to watch it? Yeah, I'm uh, actually going to be there. Sweet. Oh, yeah, that's right. You said in the chat that you were going to be at the game. Now, are you – Are you? Uh, don't be super specific, obviously, but, like, are you from New York or are you traveling? Uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. So how far is that for you to go out there? Uh, three and a half maybe, but okay. we're probably going to stop on the way, so four at most. I this thought, is what it so you were probably excited to where you when they announced that it was going to be in New York. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Co-op. Sad to see the cane season end, but the future looks bright. No matter where I end up, I am a cane for life. Hold on just a second, sorry. I can't call tonight, but I have one final prediction. 38-17 to Miami W. Wishing the best for you in 2024. Daytime cheese. Thank you for the 10, my man. I will sit you atop your throne with Buzz Talk and my man, Tucci. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you as well, Daytime Cheese. I know wherever you're going, whether that be Oregon or any of the other schools that have offered you, you'll always be a cane for life, Daytime Cheese. Nobody is going to question your loyalty to the orange and green. You don't have to worry about that. 38-17, Miami Dub. Appreciate you, Daytime Cheese. Thank you, bro. So, Stella Striker, you said that it, it was about a, a it's about a four hour drive after the stops, uh, but then yeah. you said you were hoping that it was that one or which one, the military bowl. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, because I know I'm I'm gonna be very curious to see what the turnout is for Canes fans, because I mean, for the people who do live in Florida, uh, pretty long ways to go, you know. Well, I went to the Temple game, which was in Philly, and there was mm -hmm. a decent amount of fans there, so I'm guessing there's going to be a decent amount. It's going to be the same weather as Temple, rainy, most of the game, cold. So, And I've heard that there are quite a bit of Canes fans up north, like up that way, up in New York in that area. Yeah. So, all right, so what about uh, confidence-wise? Is, is there anything about this game that, that, that you're worried about, a 6-6 six and six Rutgers team? Um, I'm worried about the run game because I know like Cameron, uh, Williams, they're all gone. Uh, we still got some of our main guys up front on the defense, but like going to be a lot of backups. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm hoping that Miami's level of talent and athleticism kind of just outweighs Rutgers regardless, you know, even with yeah. us playing like twos and threes and stuff like that. But I, I, I'm not being negative. I'm just saying a lot of Canes fans still have PTSD just period with the team, especially bowl games since our track record yeah. is not the best. So it, it's still, yeah, it's went, still a little scary. I went to the last uh, pin shot bowl we were in against Wisconsin, and that was not good. Yeah. So we're going to find out. The good thing is, is I think that I do believe that Mario will have the guys ready to play. I don't think that the, that the distractions will be much of an issue. I think they'll, they'll come out ready to play. And as, as we've discussed in the stream, and as you kind of mentioned as well, I mean, if we stop their run game, what else does Rutgers really have? Honestly. Nothing much. Just like nothing really. Us kind of. We got more of a passing game, but like we're heavily. I feel like our run game out uh, outweighs our passing game. And they have one really good back, right? They had a thousand plus yeah. yards this season. We have a bunch of guys we can bring into the mix to rotate in some fresh legs. And if it is going to be a ground and pound, wet, sloppy, potential raining game, rainy 
game, then I would trust the Canes in that situation. Yeah, I would too. And I really honestly, overall, I personally do feel pretty darn confident. I just, I can't have Miami winning by like two plus touchdowns again, just because of that unknown factor. I, I got to see, no, I feel, it, you know? Yeah, I feel like it's going to be like a one or two point like score game, like field goal, win, game winning field goal possibly. Okay. So with that being said, let's kick it over to the official Kim K score prediction, Cam. Sell striker, I'm ready. I'm thinking 27, 24, Miami. Ooh, on you weren't game kidding. winning field goal. Ooh. No, I'm, I actually wasn't. <laughs> All right, let me lock it in. Let's make it officially official here. 27, 24. Mm, Mr. Andy Borgalis coming in clutch with a win in the bowl game here. Okay. Okay, and, and I'll be honest, as much as I want to come out there and just just curb stomp Rutgers, I am happy with a win, period. A bowl game win, a game all the way up in New York, all the opt-outs, all the transfers. Just give me a win. Just give me a win tomorrow. Yeah, I, I want a bowl game win too because I forget when our last one was. Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, uh, what was that last statement? I think the the phone cut off. I, I forget when our last uh, bowl game was. Oh, uh, the, the last win. win. Um, yeah. I think it was West Virginia, and that was twenty sixteen. Somebody can tell me for sure. Twenty sixteen. Yeah, Bryce. Okay, yeah, it's twenty sixteen. I think that was West Virginia. Uh, that that's far too long and and so many so many op opposing teams fans dog us and give us a hard time for that track record in bowl games but this is mario's first one we weren't bowl eligible last year so let's see if he can start out strong in his first bowl game and, and we get the win yeah so still striker i would say uh bring a raincoat just in case maybe bundle up slightly if it's going to be you know upper 40s lower 50s and, and just have a good time tomorrow. I think it'll be a fun game. Yeah, hope it is. All right, I got you locked in. 27-24, Miami Dub. And as always, Cell Striker, I appreciate you, bro. Yep, appreciate you. All right, have a good night. You too. All right, see you. All right, two Miami Dubs predicted so far. His man Steve in the building. What's up, my man? Appreciate you helping out, people. Uh, number is on the left. Yes, number is on the left, 865-229-4131. Uh, you don't have to even be a Miami fan. You can be a fan of any team. Anybody can win the $300. It's as simple as that. No one has won it yet this season. It has been won in the past, but nobody has won it this year. I figure we rush for three touchdowns with Brown maybe getting one uh, uh, and... Possibly two passing touchdowns, maybe two field goals. Forty-one to twenty-three. I'd like that. I that's a score I could get behind. Heck yeah, bro. I I would take that. You got the card now, I, Melissa. I do apologize if I said anything about um. How do I explain it? I might have said Merry Christmas. I I tried to not make it generic. Like I, I put something personal for each one. But it might, it might. But hopefully, you, hopefully it was still okay. Hopefully you liked it. Uh, three point win against them would be damn embarrassing. And I mean, the thing is, I agree that Miami should be far superior to Rutgers. As I said, just on a pure, just pure talent and athleticism standpoint, like should be. But it, you got to factor in uh, up in New York, cold, rainy. Opt-outs, transfers, quarterback starting for the first time this season, getting his first reps in an actual game this season. I, with all that stuff being said, it's it's just very tough for me to predict Miami winning by two, three plus touchdowns. But I agree, I, I, Miami. It, Miami might come out swinging, bro. Miami might come out and take care of business, and and, and we do win thirty-eight to to seven. You know, something crazy like that. 
I can't remember when JB played last, but does he have the capability to run? Is he mobile or a statue? Jakari Brown is super mobile. And they actually had to work with him in the offseason going into this year. They had to work with him and get him to stay in the pocket more. Because his first instinct was to tuck it and run because he could pick up positive yardage most of the time. Uh, he's, you know, he's not afraid of contact. He'll lower the shoulder. And he is definitely mobile. And the only thing Jakari really ever struggled with, and I'm not harping on it because I know people get tired of hearing it, was just accuracy. Jakari has the arm strength. That dude can straight send it. And he's super mobile. He, he oozes athleticism. His build is perfect for a quarterback. All he needed to do was dial in the accuracy a bit. And to be fair, can we all be fair here for just a second? We saw him in Josh Gaddis's offense. Did anybody really look that great in Josh Gaddis's offense? Come on now. Come on now. So we're going to see. If Jakari can, can just put it all together, uh, he, he has a lot of potential. He does. I don't know much about Rutgers, but how is their defense in general? Their defense is excellent, honestly. We took a look at these stats earlier in the stream. I know there were some there weren't quite as many people here. I can show it one more time before we open the phone line back up. Red, of course, being Rutgers, green being Miami. Uh, Rutgers defense is pretty solid. Um, they rank up there. I think in overall yards allowed per game, they rank 11th in the country. Uh, they're only giving up an average of 175 passing yards per game. Uh, they're only giving up. I, their defense is pretty good. Their defense is pretty good. Now, uh, as far as consistent level of competition that they've played has not been super high. I mean, they've played Ohio State and some other decent teams, but they are known for a very physical defense and an offense that relies and leans on the run game. So that's been the story for them this entire season, Kane Apocalypse. So, what most people believe is that if Jakari Brown can play decent and we can actually put some points up on the board and we slow down or straight up stop their run game, they, they've they got nothing. Their, their best player is their running back who rushed for over 1,000 yards this season. You stop, that, you stop the run game, you stop him, their quarterback is completing 48% of his passes. I'll say that again. Their quarterback is completing 48% of his passes. We stop the run, we win. And Jakari just has to be decent. It's, it's, it's really probably as simple as that, honestly. Uh, we haven't won bowl games that uh, we've forgotten the last time we won a bowl game through. <laughs> That's sad, man. That's sad. What's up, John Shields? Can't wait until UGA drops at least a 50 burger on the overrated Knowles. Second best thing to a great Canes win. Yeah, you know, I thought about taking the alternate spread in that game, John. And I thought about taking Georgia at uh, 41. <laughs> what do you think? Like, I think that they're favored. Let's check FanDuel right quick. I, I, I swear the phone line will be open right back up. Uh, that line keeps moving. I think Georgia is favored by like 17, right? 19? Oh, it's, it's went up again? So Georgia is favored by uh, 19 and a half here, as you can see. But, you know, I thought about going here to alternate spread, right? show more, and scrolling all the way down to the bottom and see how far we could take this bad boy. Four, uh, 40 and a half? Any takers? 40 and a half at, at, at plus 1,000? <clears throat> I will be live for that game. I am, in fact, doing a live hangout for uh, the Orange Bowl for Georgia versus Florida State this Saturday. I'll be doing a live hangout for that. I'll be doing a live hangout for both of the college football playoff games. So there will be many more live streams coming up. They just won't be in Miami. So it's going to be interesting. 
USC 35, Louisville 21 in the third quarter. A&M 6, Oklahoma State 17. So Louisville's trying to claw their way back. USC jumped out to an early lead. I got the phone line open back up. Phone calls can roll back in here, y'all. Come on, let's get Big Red in here. Let's get Pence Kane in here. Let's get those score predictions rolling in. I want to give somebody the $300. All right. Somebody needs to win it. I got you, Melissa. I got you. My man, Pensa Kane. What's up? What's going on, Coach? Chilling. How was your Christmas? Ch absolutely amazing, honestly. That's w great. One of the best ones I've had in a while. What about you? Not too bad. Not too bad. A little, little bit toned down a little bit, but, you know, oh, did, it's okay. Did Santa Claus put but, some coal in the stocking this year? No, no, it was more like a rock, but... <laughs> oh, well, you know. No, no. I'm just, uh, you know, at I'm, one time, people had pet rocks, so... Well, right. well, yeah, that, that's... Yeah, that, that's uh, that's true. That's true. We had, had pet rocks, but... No, I, it, I, it was actually really good. It was uh, had a, a lot of the family fly in, parents, uh, parents-in-law, all, all kinds of stuff. So, it, it was, I, I was, I was uh, Clark Griswold. <laughs> from, from the uh <laughs> i had everybody in the house and ready for everyone to go and <laughs> yeah it was wild we f we found a way to save our christmas because i don't know were you here when i told the story about how our oven broke on christmas eve no and, and yeah and we decided just 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 real quick and i promise we'll get the football we <laughs> my wife and i never like really prepare anything like we, we're not responsible for like bringing any desserts or, or sides or anything, you know, to the family gathering. Well, for right. some reason we volunteered or kind of got volunteered. Let's be honest here to cook the main, the, the ham, the main dish. So we go, I buy like oh, this wow. 15 or 16 pound ham. I don't remember how big this thing was, but it, it was a big boy. And <laughs> we start setting out all the ingredients. Cause my wife is going to do some desserts and, and all these other things. And we go to preheat the oven, and my wife is like, why are sparks shooting around inside the oven? Uh-oh. And I was like, ha, 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 real funny. And she's like, no, come here. I opened it up. The uh, the heating element had snapped in half. Oh, man. Now, keep in mind, this is Christmas Eve. We're responsible <laughs> for the ham the next day so what we did is we found a way to like block we, we like had to like cover part of the oven and use the broil function and okay. put everything at the very bottom of the oven and try to deflect some of the heat so it didn't burn it so christmas was saved we were able to bring the turkey the peanut butter balls the 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 sugar cookies all that good stuff and everything went down just fine thank goodness awesome Awesome. Well, you could have, you could have done some some Tennessee engineering, just get some aluminum foil and wrapped around the, the broken part of the element. <laughs> true, <laughs> very true. We tend to man. That makes me think back to the days my dad would rig everything, spend money on buying a replacement part. Oh heck, no! There's a way to rig everything. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, just, just, Probably could have took like a clothes hanger or something and like connected it yeah. between the two and let it turn it on and let it fuse them back together. And then wrap it in yeah, aluminum yeah. foil. To, well. Yeah. Yeah. Bingo. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, now that I've sat here and bored <laughs> everyone with my my ham story, uh, <laughs> are you gonna get to watch the game tomorrow? Two fifteen on a weekday. I sure am. Sweet. I sure am. I am. I am off. Uh, yeah, that's what I want to ask you about um, about Brown if if he was mobile enough because I, I think it's that's what we're going to have to rely on because I, I I am you know you had mentioned. The, the weather and uh yeah i'm a, I, I hate that it's going to be rainy because i'm i'm afraid that might you know hamper his his gun i know he has an arm mm -hmm. and i'm i'm worried about the weather affecting the ability to for us to to, to get the, the deep ball so um yeah I'm, I'm actually looking for a lower score but uh I, yeah I, I think he he might just be a like an auxiliary almost like an auxiliary running back if we you know, if we can't get the the passing game going, there, there's there's going to be a lot more uh, scrambling and and uh, short passes. And, yeah, and I, I hope I'm wrong. I, I, he's the kind of guy doing like a lot more RPO and stuff. I think would be way more effective. 
Like like with Tyler, mm-hmm. nobody really believed that he was going to pull the ball that often and actually run with it. Because, I mean, I mean, he was capable at times, but he's not the fastest guy on the field. Jakari brings a right. whole different dynamic. And, you know, as right. I said, I know in the off season, like around spring and stuff, they were saying Dawson kept saying, hey, like, you know, hang in the pocket for a bit. Like, we're, we're building up the trenches. We're, we're getting a big O-line for you. Mm-hmm. You don't have to just immediately scramble when it seems like things are breaking down. So it's going to be very interesting to see the approach with him since he is super mobile. But we do have a pretty solid mm-hmm. O-line. I know we're missing Matt Lee and some other guys. But it, it will be – that, that's why I'm so intrigued by this game. I want to see how mm-hmm. Jakari has improved. I want to see if Dawson tailors this offense around his skill set because it's it's quite different from TVD. So it's, it's going to be fun to watch. But as far as if he needs to pick it up with his legs, he's very capable. And another good thing is, you know, I, I mentioned I wish he had at least a few snaps just to, just to get a feel. But, uh, you know, I guess the one silver lining to that is that Rut, not Rutgers or anybody else really has a, any uh, tape of him and, and can't really prepare for him and, and mm-hmm. to what his capabilities are, especially with a competent, you know, you know, we, we've got a, we still have a very good offensive line. Uh, so, you know, now, you know, as opposed to last year under Gaddis, like you had pointed out, you know, no, no one, uh, no one looked good under Gaddis. So no. <laughs> now this year that we have a, we have a very good offensive line and they have no intelligence. They have no, um, you know, taper. They don't know what to expect with, with uh, Brown. Yeah. So that could really, that element of surprise could help us out. That's true. And it's funny because I was thinking about that earlier this week when I was trying to prepare for the preview video and I was looking at stats and things. And I took most of my stats and I I threw them out the window just because of, number mm-hmm. one, when we talk about Jakari, like we've touched on several times, his stats are from Gaddis's offense. So I'm not going to put too much weight into that. And right. then also, uh, we're missing so many guys on offense and defense. I can sit here and talk about what we've done all season, but it it, it could look radically different tomorrow, potentially. So mm-hmm. it, it's kind of it's it's just kind of tough to say. Yeah, it's almost you know I know bowl games are are still important to you know, for the future and for the guys playing them. But because there's such a large absence of, of guys, either they're going to the portal or, or the, the draft or what have you, it's almost like it's it's going back to, you know, like a preseason NFL game where, you know, it, it counts, but it doesn't. Like, um, you know, it, it counts as a, as a win, but, you know, it, it's more uh, like in the preseason you use, in, in the NFL preseason, you use guys to kind of see, determine, you know, where you stand or, or what plays you, you know, you run plays that you haven't before. And it's more of an experimental opportunity. And it seems like bowl games are going, heading in that direction where they count, but it's more of a, it's more of a just kind of a, well, let's see what, the, what, what happens when we run this scheme or this, or this offense, or, you know, now that we're, we're absent a lot of these players, what what is uh what are what's the next guy's capability yeah and i i think you nailed it because at the end of the day you still want to win so you're going to play to sure. win but it does provide an opportunity to try some things and we're going to have new faces out there and it's it's a huge opportunity for those younger players that didn't see a lot of snaps this season to maybe mm-hmm. come out and say hey you know look at me not necessarily you know, they're not going to like solidify a, a starting role next season just based off of the Rutgers game. But, you know, maybe you say, hey, this guy can really pop off in a game. Like maybe we give him some more opportunities to start, you know, when we start spring and stuff next year and see what he can do. So that's why I'm mm-hmm. still, you know, there's not as much excitement surrounding this because it's still just not being negative, but it's the pinstripe bowl. It's it's a seven and five team right. versus a six and six team. Again, a weekday with a 2.15 time slot. But I really am looking forward to this game a lot, a whole lot, honestly. I think a win goes a long way into, into changing the culture of, you know, it's already changed, but, I mean, it's sort of a, a win would sort of, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It sort of validate that what everyone's saying, that, hey, this is our first win. Where it validates all of the people who, that we're heading in the right direction. That's true. 
and what they're saying is a win would go a long way for uh, into validating the that we are heading in the right direction. I, I just the only thing is I just wish and and it could be that uh, the weather does cooperate a little bit. It's supposed to rain early in the in the day, mm-hmm. and I think by kickoff it it should take like thirty percent. So the t- the chances um, start to to taper off. It seems right. So if it if that happens, then we get to see his arm. If if it's if it's just a uh, if it's just so messy and you know, like a, a, a slosh bowl, a mud bowl, then um, you know we can we could still utilize his mobility. But I'm I'm hoping to at least get a, the chance to see you know his arm and because they say he has a cannon. Mm-hmm. I just I just don't remember the guy. That, it's been so long. I don't remember him. <laughs> well, see, and that's when we were doing the whole QB hokey pokey. It was Tyler Van Dyke, then it was Jake mm-hmm. Garcia, then it was Jakari, then it was back to Jake Garcia, then it was back to Tyler. And I, I think mm-hmm. it's fair to say that most of us, you guys can let me know in the live chat as well, most of us have tried to erase most of that season from our brain. So when oh, people there's, there's wa- a lot of seasons I'd like to erase from my brain. <laughs> Fair. But when a lot of people <laughs> ask me, they're like, "Remember in uh, you know, in uh, in uh, you know, the season with Gaddis, like when this happened and that happened," and I'll be like, mm-hmm. "You know, no, not really. No, I don't. <laughs> no, because <laughs> I've tried so blur. hard to forget it. Exactly. Uh, right. So Pensacane, I'm gonna kick us over to the Kim K score prediction okay. cam here. I'm ready when you are. I'm thinking uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of slipping and sliding, a slosh bowl, and I think it's going to be a low scoring game. Um, our, our, we're going to rely a lot on our defense. I'm thinking Miami sixteen to six. Sixteen to six. Hey, as long as it ends in a Miami victory, I yep. am happy. So sixteen matters. to six. I'm going to lock it in. It's officially official. You cannot go back at this point, Pensacane. It's too late unless Never. you call in and pretend to be someone else with a different phone number. 16 <laughs> to 6, Kane's dub. And I could see that playing out potentially. Again, it, it, I think it's, they said it's been raining today. And then mm-hmm. we'll see kind of how the weather is tomorrow afternoon. So, yeah, it could be. So I got, right, you, I got you locked in, Pensa Kane. And as always, I appreciate the love tonight. Thank you for the support. And, and I really appreciate you calling in. And don't worry about the tree. I've got mine up, too. Still. Yeah, I, I'm going to be honest. I The last time I put it up, I left it up until, like, June or July. I don't think wow. I'll push it that far. But that bad boy, <laughs> look, that, that, that thing's at least going to be up till the first week of January. Maybe a little longer. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm taking mine down second, second or the third of January. Yeah, right, mine's a, mine's we'll a palm tree to. Christmas tree. Does doesn't that give me oh. some extra time? Like that, I can it leave does. it up. You know. Yeah, 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 I think so. Me too. I think. So. Uh, all right, Pensa Kane. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. All right, you take care. All right, have a good night. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. All right, peace. Yeah, I, I get to leave it up a little bit longer than most people, right? It's it's a it's a palm tree Christmas tree. The reality is I just don't want to rearrange my room or put in the work to take things down. I have like uh, the little red truck up there. I have stockings up. There's presents in the floor. I wrapped my light poles with tinsel and all sorts of stuff. I got I got to take all that down. <sighs> We got Rocky in the building. What's up, Rocky? It's good to see you hanging out in here. Tropagal is back from the ugly sweater party. It does take a lot of effort. And I always, typically I don't decorate a lot for Christmas. And it's because I don't want to put in the work to take it down. I won't lie. Every year my wife and I go back and forth about how much we're actually going to put up. And I do have to say that this year... We did a lot. Um, I decorated bushes outside my house. I even decorated a tree outside my house. Plus, we put up a Christmas tree. We even went around and wrapped the any pictures we had up on the wall in our house in Christmas wrapping paper. So all the pictures on the wall look like they're presents. I decorated this room. And let me tell you, it all looked really good. But I am dreading taking it all down. 
it's exactly what I thought would happen. And I'm probably going to put it off for as long as long as possible. So, But it did look good. It did look good. Uh, the mailman knows my nickname of Hoodie Girl. I can't believe you addressed it like that. <laughs> I mean, that's you. Uh, uh, Melissa, I can't send you mail and put Melissa on it. No one would know where to put it. They would see the address and they would say, I don't I don't know this Melissa person. No idea. No idea who that is. Uh, let's get it open back up again. <laughs> Phone line is open up, y'all. You can call in 865-229-4131. $300 on the line. I need somebody to win this cash. Come on now. Nobody's won it yet this season. Yo, yo, yo. Who we got on the line tonight? Hurricane B, what up, Coop? Hurricane B. Now, which, which burner phone is this? <laughs> It's the work phone. I don't have so th this is uh, this is I think the third phone you've called me from, right? Your phone <laughs> yeah. plus your wife's phone plus your your work phone. I see. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll roll with it. I'll roll with it here. Um, so should I save this number or just keep your other one? Just go ahead and save this one. <laughs> save this one too. Okay, I'm gonna write it down, just so I can. I I use it more than any of them. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm going to write it down here right quick. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because, boy, I, I I have the memory of a Mongolian gerbil. You're a, a pretty big Jakari Brown fan, correct? Absolutely. Okay, so you're probably very excited about tomorrow. I am. Okay. I'm so see, I want to see... I want to see the reason why he didn't play all year. That's fair. Do you think he comes out and, I mean, this is impossible to predict, but, I mean, do you think he comes out and has a good day tomorrow? If it's not raining, I, I think he has a real good day throwing the ball. Fair. I, I, I definitely see a world where he comes out and succeeds. As, as long as, and I, I think you would be willing to, I think as long as Dawson kind of built the offense over these last few weeks around Jakari, you don't. You, yeah, it would have to be built around him. Yeah, because again, that I, I just feel like he brings a totally different skill set to the table. Yeah, because at, at the end of the day, he's smart enough to know that if it's not there, he's tucking in and getting out of there with it anyways. Oh yeah, and and he's very capable, so that that could be very fun to watch. If he can't, if he don't throw three touchdowns, he'll run for two. <laughs> it's very possible. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, as um, uh, Pence Kane was saying, you know, they don't have a ton of tape on him. They have no tape of him in Dawson's offense. No. So uh, The only tape that anybody has is on Bora Gallus the year that he played because he kicked <laughs> 3,000 field goals that year. Yeah, very that true. That was Gattis' offense. Very, very true. So how's your how's your confidence level going into this one with, with Miami being two and a half point underdogs? I laugh when I've seen that, honestly. So you think they're you You're think like, they're off? Yeah. Way off. Okay. I, 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 I don't see a world where you put Rutgers a two and a half point favorite. It is kind of wild, I will say, to see that because when when I think Rutgers, I I don't put them way up here, right? So yeah, even though there's all there is all the uncertainty with Miami because there is, and and uh, you know we took a positive step this year, but it was still only seven and five, but then to look at the the betting lines and to see. Miami as the underdog against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. I'm like, man, they they better use this, and Miami better went come out and win by three or four touchdowns. Well, here's how I see it. You know, they can say what they want to, but you put Rutgers in the ACC, they're not even bowl eligible. Oh yeah, I mean, I I agree. I mean, they're let's actually, you know what? Let me pull up Rutgers schedule from this season. How did they end at six and six? Let me take a look here. 
just so we've got a visual. Um, and just a refresher for me as well. I think one of the only big games they played was Ohio State, and they got beaten that game. Yep. Yeah, they – um. Did they also play Michigan this year? They might they might have played Ohio State and Michigan. Let's see. Let's pull it up here. Let's find out who did Rutgers beat this season. So they beat Northwestern 24 to 7. Uh they beat Temple 36 to 7. They beat Virginia Tech 35 to 16, but we know kind of how that went with Virginia Tech. They're finding some success it appears late in the season, but Definitely kind of. Yeah, but they were all over the place all year. Exactly. Uh, Michigan thirty-one to seven. Uh, they stomped Wagner, the Seahawks, <laughs> fifty-two to three. So let's look at some decent teams here. They play. They lost to Wisconsin, twenty-four to thirteen. That was kind of close. Uh, Michigan State. Nobody gets credit for beating Michigan State. That was just an absolute disaster no. for them. They beat Indiana thirty-one to fourteen. Um, Ohio State, they lost 35-16. to 16. Interesting. They lost to Iowa 22 to no- – oh, that's right. They lost four games in a row to close out the season. They lost to Penn State 27-6, to 6, and they lost to Maryland 42-24. to 24. So, basically, they beat everybody with a losing record. That seems to be the case. I mean, their biggest win is what? Probably – Indiana or Virginia Tech? Yeah, it'd have to be. So, I don't know uh, anybody else is bow eligible. <laughs> so, or they're playing so maybe it, Northwestern. It's just so interesting because, again, what they do well is what our defense plays well against, which is, you know, we're, we're very good at stopping the run. They're very good at running the ball. So that very much seems to put the favor – towards Miami, again, I think it all just falls on the question marks. And and what we said at the beginning of the stream was, with the personnel that we have on the field tomorrow, will that still be the case? Will that still be Miami's strong suit and what we're really good at? Well, I, me personally, I'm going to blitz all night long. You're going to show me you can beat me with your arm. Well, and with their, with their quarterback, he won't. Exactly. Uh, he he just won't. <laughs> There's no way. So, and that's just, and that's just how I look at the game. I mean, he's, I mean, he's not going to beat you with his arm. And he's not that mobile. So, no. Now I will say I I will be pissed it, again when I looked at this dude's stats. We're talking less than fifty percent completion percentage, like forty seven, forty eight. If he comes out and is just slinging it against our secondary tomorrow, I'll be pissed. I don't care who's on the field for us. If it's somebody that saw no snaps this season, second guy up, third guy up, it, it doesn't matter. That guy better not come out and be super successful in the passing attack tomorrow. No, yeah, I'll be pissed. Yep. I'm kind of curious. That I wanna, I'm curious to see Jaden Davis playing at safety. Yeah, that's, and again, that's that's why I think this game is so fun, why I'm actually kind of extra hyped for it. It's literally the last time we see the Canes take the field in 2023, and then you're going to see some guys maybe swapped around a bit, and you get to see some young up-and-comers that you're probably going to see get a lot more reps in 2024. This game's very exciting to watch. I, 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 I have to have Miami win. I can't finish this year with a loss. I can't do it. <laughs> So, I mean, eight wins sounds a lot better than seven. You, know, you factor in the bowl game here. So here's what I'm going to do, Hurricane B. I'm going to kick you over to the Kim K-sponsored score prediction cam. And now remember, $300 is on the line. So I want the numbers that, that you firmly believe is going to win you this money. 34 to 10, Miami. Ooh, okay. Because I, I honestly see Fletcher scoring at least three by himself. I'm going to lock you in. You're sure? You're locked in. 34-10. I'm sure. 34-10. Okay. Let's make it officially official. No backing out now. All right. Hurricane B, I got you down. I would be ecstatic with 34-10. to 10. 
That, that'd be oh, a me huge too. win. First bowl game victory since 2016. Uh, bro, I, I'll take it. I'll take it for sure. Hey, so, at, at the end of the day, it's all about the U. Always. All day, every day, 24-7, 365. That's right. Hurricane B, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, man. All right, you have a good one. All right, you too, buddy. All right, see you. All right. Four Miami dubs predicted so far tonight. And, Tog, don't worry. We'll get you in here, bro. We will get you in. It, it's kind of a, It's kind of a relatively slow night. Again, I mean, a lot of people had to go back to work tomorrow. So a lot of people are snoozing right now. So this is the night to get in. Definitely. Um, that Kane fan, what's up? Let's get you in here, bro. Let's let's get you in here. We won't, we won't quite call lightning round just yet, but we will probably soon. Because I have to remember, it's a 2-15 game tomorrow. And your boy Coop goes to bed at like 4 or 5 in the morning. You guys know this. So I usually roll out of bed at like 12. That gives me two hours to prep the stream, to have everything set up. I got to lube the siren up. I'm expecting to crank it a bunch tomorrow. I mean, you get it. You know, you know. So let's get, let's get it open, open back up. And uh, we'll get you guys in here. All right. It's open. It's open again. Got to be at work at 6 a.m., but no sleep while Coop is live. And Traveling Fools, I see you in the building. It's good to see you, my friend. There he is, Big Red. What's, What's up? up, Coop? The Bama fan, correct? Huh? The Alabama fan, correct? Absolutely. Mm. You Are you going to win a, a national championship this year or what? Well, do you want to start with the uh, college football playoffs or the Miami game first? Well, let's talk about the playoffs for a second. Because, I mean, you got a dog in that fight, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to uh, know a little bit more about that one than I do the Hurricanes. But, uh, so, you actually think Washington's going to win it all? Okay. <laughs> Wait. Okay, he hear me out. For hear me out. <laughs> Would I put money on Washington? No. If I had to put money on any team, I'm going to be real with you. I'm probably putting it on Alabama. And I am not, listen, I'm not saying that to butter you up. I'm not a fan of Nick Saban. You know I'm not a Bama fan. I have family members that are always running their mouth about Alabama, driving me nuts. But if you said, Coop, I want you to take every penny that's in your bank account right now and put it on a team to win the national championship, I would have to put it on Alabama. I feel like Alabama is getting, has gotten better and better as the season has progressed. It seems like they're playing some of their, their best football right now. It, it very well could be a, a rematch of, of Alabama and Texas, honestly. But I will say this. I do think it would be quite humorous if Washington did win. And I'm I'm just saying, don't count them out. That's all I'm saying. All right. So this is my prediction for let's start um obviously not my game. We're saving the best for last round here. Um Washington, Texas. Okay. Well let let's start at the beginning of the actually last season. Lost to L S U, lost to Tennessee struggled with Texas. Okay, started this year. Lost to Texas, beat LSU, beat Tennessee, beat Georgia. Who's the only team left for the revenge? Mm -hmm. Texas. Yeah. Alabama takes national championship. Alabama comes back, beats Texas for the revenge year of the season. We take the national championship home. Mm. Now, obviously, you like the idea of that, and I know you probably don't want to jump to this just yet, but is is there an actual chance that becomes reality? Oh, oh 100%. Okay. I have no doubt in my mind about Alabama beating Michigan, 
Um, obviously, the bigger concern there is Texas beating Washington, but I think they can do it. I I really think there is a, I think Washington could surprise some people. I, I I know I know people are saying why would it be humorous that I think Washington wins? And it's because I feel like everyone other than Washington fans, there's always exceptions. But I feel like that pretty much everyone else is counting Washington out. When you see the names up there like Michigan, Alabama, Texas, people are like Washington. Pfft. Yeah, right. And I, I'm telling you, I again, my money would be on Bama, but a very, a very close second would actually be Washington for real. This, this is my one knock on Washington. I don't like Penix. Why not? Um, he's not a leader. Um, what? Because I think it was their last game of the season. They won by a field goal, correct? Uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, to be honest. I, I remember uh, it was either it was one of the games there close to the end of the season, and I believe it was that last game of the season. Actually, I think it was the last game of the season versus Oregon State. They drove down the field, a little bit of time left, and uh, Penix put his head in a box and like was had a towel over his head and like wouldn't even watch the field goal to make sure they like to watch and see if they won the game and like. As a leader, you got to be there supporting the rest of your players, until and, and, and supporting them, and telling them that we're going to make it. You know, hyping them up, and instead of putting your head in a box, saying you got to tell me if we make the field goal. You see what I'm saying? That's fair. Well, I mean, is well, I think I know what the answer is going to be here. Is Jalen Milrow that guy? Oh, <laughs> Milrow, Milrow's been that guy. Everybody's doubted him all year. Miro has been that guy. Okay, I, I, I mean, I I would expect that answer from a, from a Bama fan. I would. So the, so then, can I ask this then? Uh, what about this Michigan matchup? Is, is that going to be a tough game for y'all, or what do you think? Here, my one and only concern, and I've said this since we figured out that we're playing in Michigan. My one concern is, is if we can block, stop Blake Corum. If we stop Blake Corum, we win that easily. If we have problems with Blake Corum and stopping his run game, it might be a closer game than I would want. So then, am I jumping too far ahead to ask your official prediction for? The national championship matchup so and match- and winner. Uh, matchup: uh, Bama, Texas, and winners Bama. Uh, obviously, I'd love for us to go out there and just clobber them after they beat us, but you know that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> but uh, I I no, think I, uh, I, I don't know. It, it would lose into Texas two times in a row put Saban into the retirement home? Absolutely not. <laughs> or would that just fuel him uh, and, and drive him to, to work even harder? You know, they're coming to the SEC, and so he probably take a little bit of motivation out of that, but it ain't going to happen. Saban ain't going to lose to Texas twice in a row. What if it's Washington, or as as the people around here where I live call them, Washington? Washington. What about Wa- Bama versus Washington? Bama huh? would clobber Washington. Really? Okay. Oh yeah, pass it. We we got we our pass defense is locked down. You know, I'd kind of like to see that matchup. If I'm being honest with you. I would like to see a Bama versus Washington national championship. I would like to see both of them just because, uh, you know, I think it'd be cool to see a team like Washington, a team, you know, you would not expect to hear be in the playoffs uh, against us, but also, yeah. you know, take it for the revenge version of the season and all. Yeah, because I'm sure, honestly, even though your other game against them was a loss, a lot of Bama fans probably do want that revenge. And what a better way to get it than 
in the national championship game. Right. Like, yeah. See, it's, it's, you know, you were talking about my picture earlier. Yes, I'm a Chiefs fan. It's kind of like the Bills and the Chiefs. The Bills always beat us in the regular season, but we beat them in the playoffs. Yeah, when, when it really matters. When it yeah, comes down to the... Matters, we, we win. Okay. I also want to bring this up because I meant to bring it up first time I called on. The first time I ever found your channel was when you made the diss track against us when y'all started the season against us. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Can't I? I still listen to that diss track to this day. It's fire. Thank you. I, uh, you know, I. It was, uh, it, it was put on ESPN. They they did laugh a little bit about it. But uh, <clears throat> you know, it it got some some views, which is my job as a YouTuber. But yeah, uh, I peep it a bunch of times, and I still peep it to this day. Have you ever seen my Florida Gators diss track? I have not. Okay. Has everyone in the chat seen my Florida Gators diss track? The reason I ask is because that was one of the early diss tracks that I did, and I actually would say. That one didn't get near as much traction, but I'm probably more known for that one. And I'm thinking about running it back and doing a Gator Hater 2.0 diss track for 2024 because we open with Florida in the swamp. So let me know what you guys think. If anybody in here saw my Gator Hater diss track back in the day, I'm thinking about running it back. We'll see, though. So Big Red... Hey. Let's talk about the most important game. This Miami versus Rutgers game. I thought we done talked about Bama and Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> the most uh, important game coming up. <clears throat> Miami versus Rutgers. From an outside perspective, from a Bama fan. Uh, let, let's kick it to the score prediction cam because I know. Let's kick it over here. You know there's three hundred dollars on the line, and you seem like a a a pretty level headed guy. I know I know you're gonna want to pull a lot for Bama in your prediction, so that's understandable. But you sound you sound like a smart level headed guy. Who would you pick in a Miami versus Rutgers matchup in New York at Yankee Stadium, in a potentially rain field or has been raining in the hours leading up to the game who you got all right i want to start with um obviously since i started watching you and everything i wouldn't call myself a miami fan because i couldn't name a single player but i am a miami supporter so that it, um, that it's a close second is what you mean so like so like bama's like right here but then miami's like Right here. They're like right on the tail end, right? That's what you mean? More like Alabama is <laughs> like at the ceiling, and and then um, I know you're going to hate me for this, but Colorado is my, actually my second favorite. What? I love Coach Prime. I love Coach Prime. Uh, what? The thing that third, of course, third. Three. Hey, three. Top three. There's like. 400 power five schools. I'm a, 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 a big podium. red. I'm about to hang up this phone right now. It's a podium. It's a, it's a spot on the podium. You're telling me Bama, then Colorado, then Miami. Yes. <laughs> but scores, 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 scores. Let's not make anybody mad. <laughs> uh, I'm ready. I'm ready. Pen and paper in hand. 31-10 Miami. Okay. I will at least give you that, predicting a Miami dub in the Rutgers game. Let's make it officially official here. I, I will say I'm glad uh, Rutgers no longer has Pacheco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, My dog. <laughs> yeah, he, he's an exciting guy to watch play football. He, he's super physical, and like he's, he's fun to watch. I've never seen someone with so like as small as he is with so much pep in his face. He's, he's a fiery guy. 
I mean, he he's got so much power and he's fast too. Yeah. Like if he gets in the open field, bro, he's like really fast and he's got like some power behind him. I just thought it was funny that you mentioned him because I'm not a Chiefs fan personally, but I have watched some of their games because I like watching him play. I like watching him run the ball. He, no joke. I mean, he's just so fun. He, me and my dad, we'll sit in the, he, my dad watches Kansas City with me, and we'll sit in the living room, and we'll just start cracking up watching Pacheco run. It's like a tiger chasing him, bro. I don't know, though, man. <laughs> it's The the Chiefs are, are having a little bit of a, a tough go here late. So, yep. It's going to be interesting to see who wins I'm the Super Bowl. I'm pretty sure I broke my I'm pretty sure I broke my hand over uh, the Bills game a couple weeks ago. So. Oh man, I'm mad too because I had I had a bet going on that game, and uh, I did not expect I I did not anticipate the Bills playing like they did in that one. Mm. Mm. I was so mad. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's just our wide receiver room. If we could change our wide receiver room, we would be the best team ever. Our defense is so good. Our running back room, I mean, Pacheco, but then Jarek McKinnon. Go what? Have you ever watched him block somebody? Not, not, I've not paid particular attention, no. If, if you just, whenever you have five minutes, just go watch some highlights of him blocking defensive linemen, especially here in KC. I mean, this dude's like five foot eight. 180 pounds, and you would think he's seven foot seven, 480 pounds. <laughs> I mean, he'll just clobber the defensive lineman and just start running this route. It's all right, though, Big Red. I got you locked in, my man. 31 to 10, a Miami Hurricanes victory with $300 on the line. And I appreciate you being patient. We got you in here, and, and thank you for calling in tonight. Appreciate it, Coop. Right. Go Kane. Have a good night, bro. Let's go. Hey, we got that Go Canes out of him. Co Bama, Colorado, then Miami. Make it make sense. There's, there's no way. Big Red, there is no way you put Colorado ahead of Miami on that list. No freaking way. No way. What? That Kane fan twenty one. Uh, what's your area code? Do I have your number saved? Melissa with the dollar ninety nine. Melissa ain't here for that Bama talk, that Chiefs talk. She's here to talk about the number one team, the greatest team what in takes. college football history, you, the Orange on the and Green. It's a no brainer. Next, it's it, it's literally a no brainer. I'm just saying. Hey, Crip, were you wanting to call in tonight? I don't care to give you a ring. I, I, I owe you that since I've I've had trouble lining up the communication to give you a call with the car. So I owe you that much at least, bro. So you let me know. So we're going to do, I think we're going to jump into a bit of a lightning round. <clears throat> you guys know I'm the, uh, I'm the best when it comes to quick phone calls, in and out, unlike anything you've ever seen. We'll move into a bit of a lightning round because I would like to go no later than 1130 just to prepare everything for tomorrow. So maybe 15-ish more minutes or less, and then we'll call tonight. So if you want to get in here, put that number on speed dial, 865-229-4131. Let's try to get you in here. Last chance to win the $300 score prediction contest in 2023. This is it. This is it. What if we end on a Crip call? Are you cool with that, Crip? We wrap it up with my man Crip when we do the last call. All right, it's open. It is open. It's good to see you in here, James Kane. I appreciate you. We have my man Traveling Fools in the building. Who? What are you doing? What is up? I, yeah, just 
hanging around. Doing a, you, you know, know just you know, hanging out. Just thinking. I thought I'd pop in here and see see what you were up to tonight. <laughs> just hanging about, man. I hate that. Um, and obviously, I could just DM you or or text you, but this way I can kind of tell you like one on one. I really wanted to jump on more of your shows this year. It's just been so freaking crazy. Like, I just wanted you to know that I've not been, like, ignoring your messages and purposely not jumping on your shows. It's just been wild and hectic, and I keep meaning to, and I just can't seem to get it lined up. No, man, it's all good. All good. Busy. I, I always send you an invite just in case you'll get one tomorrow as well. Yep. I was going to say, keep, keep <laughs> sending them my way, and if, if I can make it work out, I promise you I'll, I'll try to jump on it. Well, you'll get you'll get one in your email tomorrow. I just always know <laughs> to expect it, and you're always welcome. Sounds good. So, All right. Um, well, I, I I know you got a lot of people to jump through. So, uh, my score prediction is thirty-three to nineteen. Now, hold on. We must be on the official Kim Kardashian sponsored score prediction cam for it to count. So, I'm now here, and I know that you as well are a big fan of Kim Kardashian. Um, <clears throat> so, I, I mean, she's got a she's got a couple, um, or at least one nice ass. Et. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I would hit the I would hit the button button, but it's it's just out of reach. Um, I'm gonna need those magic numbers from you one more time, so now we can make it official. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go thirty three to nineteen. 33 to 19 in favor of well the canes of course okay, all right. we you, you know, know I, I'll, I'll never i'll never pick against us <laughs> i don't care i don't care we, who we're playing we don't want it to be up for debate you know later on if you do in fact win this money so let's lock it in and make it officially official with the cha-ching here okay kim k approves of this score prediction based on her facial expression 33 right. to 19 Miami victory from traveling fools. I'll take that. There we go, man. There I'll we go. That. And that, that, that's what it's going to be. Y'all take it to the bank. You know, um, if I was you, I would like, you know, put your last dime on that, uh, that score prediction. Can I be <laughs> honest with you real quick? I have only bet on a Miami game one time in my life. And this it was it Miami versus Pitt. To where do you? I think of your 20... Helmet. Oh, man. That voice is velvet. 2021? This is what it take. <laughs> uh, Melissa, by the way, Who is you? very happy you called. She said, oh, man, that voice is I velvet. I forgot y'all was the best team no, with boy, 19 thanks. natty's face thanks, with rolling Melissa. ice thank face you. with rolling ice. Um, I, w- I, won a, I won a dollar from Pete this year from, uh, you, you know, picking uh, Miami over Clemson. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so I'm on to something, you know. So uh, I am – man – I'm so tempted because they have Miami as the underdog in this game, and I feel pretty confident, even with all of the circumstances, that Miami will win. They've got them at like plus 105 or plus 110 or something along those lines. I I, I don't know. I'm very tempted. I, I do not – I don't usually bet on Miami games, though, because you know, too much emotion and fandom is involved. And right, when there's bet, already there's already too much uh, yeah <laughs> emotion and fandom involved to put money on it. I'm man, I, I, I don't ever bet. I don't ever bet on them either. I'm so, so tempted. I don't, I probably won't. I'll stay away from it. But it's it's very tempting. It is. Yeah, well, put put ten bucks on it. There you go. Ten bucks. Okay, yeah, yeah. Maybe. You know that's not too bad. Yeah. That's not. Too I'll bad. think about. I right, mean, I, I yeah, I know you got. I know you got other callers coming in, so let's let somebody else come in and give their uh, their score prediction. But you got mine, man. Um, as always, great show, and you know, maybe we'll see you around the YouTube streets tomorrow. Sounds good, my man. I got you locked in, and I appreciate you as always. All right, buddy. You have All a good. Right, one, have man. a good. You too. Bye bye. All right, no Rutgers victories predicted tonight. Vegas set up having Miami as the dog. <laughs> We're going to find out, huh? We're going to find out. Uh, Dak Kane fan, what was your area code one more time? If I ask, I might have missed it. I might have missed it, so let me know. Uh, that guy, you'll be in section 105 tomorrow. Let's go. Rep the U in New York, my man. This is what it takes. Love it, love it, love it, love it. To wear the U on the side of your helmet. 
Ku check out two pics I just texted of a couple band members on a dinner cruise right now around Ooh. NYC and you can show them. I can show them. Okay. I got you. I'll pull it up here in just a second. Tropical. So they're already in, right? Didn't you say uh, tr uh, Tropicid and the band left early this morning, right? Was that at like 4 or 5 a.m. or was that yesterday? No? I, I, think, I think that was this morning that you said that. I think. I'll pull it up and we'll take a look here. Tropical, thank you for the five. Melissa, thank you for the $1.99. Tug, thank you for the two. I mean, Tug, you really going to put this you in third place? Tug, don't do me like that. Third? Unbelievable. Uh, Tug, thank you for that. Melissa, appreciate you. Chop a gal, thank you. Let's see if I can pull that up right quick. Uh, I want to get the... the uh, Area code from that Kane fan. Uh, let's pull up the text from Tropical here. And you're okay with me showing this? I did see where they got the uh, the beans. I know I didn't respond to your text, but I did see that. Have they tried them yet? She's fine. She's fine with me showing it. The picture. This is what it take to wear the you. I want to make sure before I pull it up. If I'm not back, TMR, I'll be back for the big games. Sounds good, Tug. I'll be live for that Bama game if you want to come in and talk some trash. I'll be live for the playoff games. So you can come in. It's super chill. It's super chill. So you're more than welcome, of course, as always. So um, let me make sure it doesn't show a phone number or anything here. Okay, here is pick numero uno. That's so cool because what you always see with the bowl games, and again, I know a lot of people don't. I got to be careful with my wording here. I know a lot of people don't care about all of the outside stuff with the bowl game. They just care about the game and the wins and losses. But it is always kind of cool because, you know, they make a whole trip out of it for the team. So the players get to go and sightsee. They set up a lot of events and stuff for them. So I know they, they took the players to see the 9-11 memorial. Um, they got to go out and they were hanging around with like some street performers and different things like that. They take them out to eat. And they get to see places that maybe they've never been before. So this is really cool. They're both in the band. And you can see they arrived in New York. And they get to go around and sightsee and stuff. So you get to see all sorts of cool places. And it's just an added bonus. You know, it's really cool that they get to do that and have those experiences when they may not have, you know, ever gotten to do that otherwise. Okay, so then they're hopping on that. To They're going to eat on the boat? The, is that something just your daughter did? Or they were hosting, like, the whole band? Spirit of New York. That's really cool. I always appreciate these pictures you send me, Tropical. They're very, I know I don't always respond. Very bad about responding. <clears throat> but uh, I always appreciate them very much. What's your score prediction? My official score prediction? 24 to 20. Miami Dub. I'm actually pretty confident in this game. I know my score prediction, you know, a win by four probably doesn't reflect that. But again, Rutgers has a, a, a pretty physical defense. If it's going to be wet and sloppy, there's probably going to be a lot of running the ball. Miami's got to show me that they are an effective run stopper with the personnel that's going to be on the, the field tomorrow. So that's what I got. Either way, I think Miami takes care of business. I'm not really worried about that side of it. Uh, so let's see. That Kane fan, that Kane fan. I don't know for sure, Sigmund. They've not released an official depth chart for tomorrow. You you know how Mario operates. So it's going to be interesting to see. They're definitely going to rotate some guys. They're still going to probably try to play the guys with the most experience if they can, just because Mario is really going to want this, this first bowl game win, for sure. You have Rutgers winning, really? Okay, so 8-6-4. Okay, I'm, I'll be looking for it, Kane fan. We're going to get the phone line open back up again. Uh, lightning round. Lightning round. So we're going to go really quick here. We're, we're only going to stream for about eight more minutes. So got to get it in. Got to get it in, y'all. 
Let's go. Eight minutes. Final chances to win the 300 bucks. Fletcher will do good tomorrow. This game is set up really well for him. This is a game that Fletcher could go off. Yes. That Kane fan, and you've called before, right? Or am I crazy? Oh, I got your number, Cajun Kane. I got you. DJE, what's up? Give me a call, that Kane fan. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. Yo, 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 would this happen to be that Kane fan 21? This is, this is. Let's go. We got him. We got him. How, how many uh, roughly do you think it took? 20, 30, 40? Uh, I'm about at 25. 25. That's not too bad. Not too, too bad. I'm about at 25. 25. That's not too bad. 21. Okay. Now, let me save your number so that way I can address you properly the next time. And do you have my stream up in the background by chance? Um, I do. Okay. If you don't mind, if you can turn it down just a bit so we don't have the echo. Okay. While I write your number down. Okay. So I got I got the number saved. Now, I know you've been in the streams and stuff before, but have you called into one? Um, this is my first time. First time and a first time caller. We're gonna clap it up again. Okay. I uh, I know you can't hear it on your end through the line, but I pressed the uh, the crowd clapping button. Just so you know, I almost clicked the wet fart button. So that would have been catastrophic. That that was not what I was trying to do. But we were successful. We 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 clicked the clapping button. So, um, Miami versus Rutgers, we're doing a bit of a lightning round. So we're, we're trying to keep it brief so we can get a, a couple calls in here at the end, but I do just want to know kind of your, your gut feeling going into tomorrow before you give numbers. So are you, are you feeling good about this game? Um, I'm feeling pretty good about the game. You know, um, I think Jakari will do good tomorrow. So, yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, I mean, obviously the 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 better he plays, the better. Uh, but he he doesn't mm -hmm. even necessarily have to come out and do anything too too crazy, you know. Uh, he's he's just got to play well. Just got to play well. Did we lose you? No, I'm still here. Okay, you're still there. Good deal. All right, so what I'll do, I'll kick us I'll kick us over to the official score prediction cam here. $300 on the line. So again, you want to you want to try to set fandom and emotion to the side. I'm ready when you are. Uh, I got 3130 Miami. Ooh. -hoo. A 1 point dub for the Canes. Let's lock it in. Let's lock it in here. Ooh. Okay. Little too close for comfort, but a win is a win, I guess. Some people will argue against that. Depends on who you ask. But that Kane fan 21, I got you locked in. 31-30, Miami victory. I'll have your number saved, so next time I'll know it's you when you're calling in. And I just appreciate your patience tonight, and I'm happy that we got you in here. No problem. All right. You have a good night, bro. Too. All right, peace. Peace. Heck yeah, we love, love, love first time callers. Absolutely love it. My man D Lo coming in and re upping that Canes fan membership for three months. He says, Sup, Coop, not watching a single game until next year. Mario better earn my time. Ooh. Fair, understandable. Now, I I do think that the that the team as a whole took a positive, small step forward this season. There were obviously a lot of things we're unhappy about. There are things that are unforgivable that I'm not even going to speak of because I just say that, and you guys know exactly what I'm referring to. That we did take a small positive step forward, and I expect. 
another small step forward next season. But we'll get into that later. We'll get we'll get into that later for sure. Thank you, D-Lo. I appreciate the love, man. Uh, so let's see. We got to get Crip in here. Uh, are you going to call Cajun Kane? You're going to get in here as well. So, hey, Fletcher 20-plus carries, 200-plus yards. That man would be eating. Woo! So we're going we're gonna to get – we got three more minutes, y'all. Three more minutes. Last second calls. Yeah, Jackson Johnson, what's your area code? Let me know, and I'll be on the lookout. It's going to be – we're going to go quick. Going to go quick. Rocky, what's good? Man, Coach Coop, I feel privileged every time I get on this line, man. It's it's a challenge. <laughs> it, happening, bud? it is a, a bit of a challenge. Um, I know that Kane fan was saying that he called like 25 times. I mean, there have been people that have called 100 plus. I've had so, I've had over 100. I've had 102. Yeah. Tonight, it, yeah. It, it really has been the perfect night for first-time callers or, or people that normally struggle to get in because it's – as we said, it's not my normal night. It's it's a Wednesday, bro, at eleven thirty. You know, yeah. like it, it, I, I'm not used to being live and and having a game tomorrow on a Thursday. It's kind of weird circumstances. Yeah, throwing you off a little bit, man. I get it, throwing you yeah. off the game, but you're doing it. You're doing a great job as always, holding it down on the cane stream. But love hey, it. Love I appreciate stream. you. What you know, what I'd really like to do is give someone this three hundred dollars, Rocky. And, <laughs> well, I'd love to win it. You know, if you <laughs> have nice the magic, yeah, if you have the magic numbers, this could be yours. Well, so let me see if I can give. Let me see if I can give it a shot. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go twenty to ten canes tomorrow. Twenty to ten. Twenty to ten, and well, you're lucky. I just barely got it switched to the Kim K cam before those numbers came out. Ah, uh, uh, almost so jinxed it. Twenty jinxed it. to ten, Miami victory. And again, because I've got what was it I had? I had twenty four twenty, so I gave Rutgers a little more uh, respect, I guess, offensively here. But I, I again, I think that's probably in that realm, it, at least now. It's easy to say that now, right? We'll see what kind right. of tune we're singing tomorrow about four or five o'clock. Uh, let me. So many, so many unknowns, Coop. Different, yep. different pieces in different places. You know, uh, I'm pretty. You know, what are we going to get? I'm pretty sure I started my preview video off. With a massive disclaimer saying, I feel like this game is just super unpredictable. Because yeah, it's, I mean, it, it is tough to predict a game like this. It is. So, yeah, I mean, you, you know, I mean, I'm sure you went through it all. I'm not going to rehash it. The Jacurry Brown, uh, you know, the different players on the line, you know, no, no defensive backfield with Cam and James. I'm just, it's on and on. So yeah. we'll see. I mean, we'll see what we get tomorrow, you mm -hmm. know. As long as it's a win, I'll I'll be a, a happy man, pretty happy man. I'm, I'm doing I'm doing I'm doing a New York style tomorrow. I've got my I've got my bagel, bacon, egg, and cheese ready to go in the morning, and I've got my <laughs> pie, not my pizza, my pie Your ready pie. to go. Pie, okay. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm, well, now what, got it ready to go. what are you putting on the on that pie? What do pepperoni we got? Pepperoni and cheese. Pepperoni and cheese. Pepperoni, and, pepperoni and, cheese. and cheese. Okay. All right. I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty simple when it comes to that. I like I like the traditional type. Type deal. Oh, me too. I, I'm a cheese man myself. Just cheese with hey, extra good. cheese. But I, I will dabble in the pepperonis from time to time if I'm feeling frisky. It depends. Gotta be adventurous sometimes, Coop. You gotta try yeah. that sometimes. In my old age, I'm finding that I don't mind being more open to trying different foods and stuff. So, mm. all right. There you go, bud. So, Rocky going all in. New York theme the whole day, the whole nine yards. Forget right. about it, man. Forget, Forget about, about it. it. <laughs> Rocky, I got you locked in. I, I appreciate you, bro. All right, coach. All right, you have see a you good night. Too. All right, see you. Forget about it. I can't even do it. I can't even do the... Uh, it kind of sucks because when you're from the South, anytime I try to do like accents or anything like that, it always just falls back into being Southern. It's like no matter what, I can't overcome it. If I do Australian, it becomes Southern Australian. I do New Yorker, it becomes Southern New Yorker. I can't get rid of the Southern twang. I just can't. I can't. And the more this I find myself takes. hanging out 
to where do you with more and more I'm family sorry, here it always comes right hey, back co-op. out happy holidays eric finkelstein thank you very much my friend for the 499 happy holidays to you as well i hope you and the family had a good one and continue to have a good one into the new year i appreciate you eric thank you for the love At least, at least the Southern accent was voted sexiest accent uh, sometime. I, I, I remember that happened one time uh, at some point. So, <clears throat> Last couple calls, guys. Last couple calls. Uh, Jackson Johnson, I'll be looking for you as well. Yo, 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 Cajun Kane, what's good? What's up, man? Yo, How's like, going? I actually, I, you know what? I got a question for you, like, for real, for real. Um, All right, what's up? Let me, let me write this down real quick. Not you, I've got your number saved, but I want to write down Jackson Johnson's thing here real quick. Uh, I, was, I was hanging out in your stream the other night. I'm not a chatter. I just lurk. You got to hook mm -hmm. me up with this Roblox college football thing. Because that looks really freaking fun. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Like, it's so cool. You get to, like, take control of, like, individual position players. And are those actual other players playing the other positions? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's an online game. There's a bunch of other people playing. That's sick. you got to hook me up and tell me how I can play that. All right, but I got we'll, you. We'll handle that. We'll handle that business off stream. Um, so we are in a bit of a lightning round here. I know you've been thinking about this game. I know you probably got some magic numbers in mind. So I'm going to kick us over to the score prediction, Cam. All right. That way we can make it official. And I appreciate right. your patience and, and rolling with the lightning round since we're trying to make it quick here. Um, right. So I am ready when you are. All right. I have Miami winning 27 to 20. 27 to 20. In a somewhat close one. But a Miami victory nonetheless. Let's lock you in here right quick. I don't think our defense is going to be as elite as some people think it's going to be. I think we're just going to still give up 20 points to Rutgers. See, and it's funny that you say that because, you know, again, you know, that's what I have as well. I also have us giving up 20. And I, I think, you know, our defense is still pretty solid, but – when you when you break it apart and you take Cam and you take James out of the backfield, you take LT off that D line, you factor in some injuries. There's bound to be right. some mistakes that are made and maybe some rust. Right. You know, that, that's not the normal standard starting group that's out there. So I right. agree. And I think and I think what Gidry's going to do since Daryl Porter's back, I think he's going to move him to strong safety and put Damari Brown at. Daryl's starting spot and like move a couple other guys around and yes. try to like because I feel like Daryl can also play strong safety too and see that's that's what's going to be so interesting is to see who marches out where tomorrow and that that adds another factor to it that I'm it makes me very excited to watch tomorrow right. so all right Cajun Kane I got you locked in 27 to 20 Miami and as always, I appreciate the love. You're always commenting on the videos and hanging out in the chat and stuff, and I, I appreciate you, bro, for real. Yes, sir. All right. You have a good one. Hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. You too. All right. Peace, man. Peace. Uh, Coop, who are you wanting to see uh, get to play tomorrow besides JB11? Um, for me personally, I would like to see Tyler Harrell get some more burn. Uh, again, we know how fast that guy can be. Uh, so I would like to see Tyler Harrell at the wide receiver position. And I, I would love to see Arroyo get some more looks. You know, he, he was a guy, I kept talking about him in the offseason. It's time for the Arroyo show. And he continued to battle, you know, some injuries. And he's in the clear, so it would be kind of cool to see him maybe get some catches tomorrow. I mean, hey, obviously, it'd be cool to see any tight ends get catches tomorrow, right? McCormick, Arroyo, some of the young guys, you know, Riley, whoever it may be. But I would love to see uh, Arroyo uh, get some catches. So for me, 
Harrell and Arroyo. And I'm a skill position guy. Like Again, played receiver in high school, so I love talking receivers. Uh, but that would be huge. What about you, though? What about you? I'd like to see a response also, other than Jakari. Oh, man, tomorrow is our last UM game. Hangout stream for the season. Sad times, Tropical. There will not be a live hangout for a Miami game until September of next year. And that's why I always tell people, Tropical, it actually is. I'm serious. It's a bit emotional for me because I work so hard in the off season to, to freshen things up and to make these hangouts and these streams so much fun. And everything comes down to just three to four months out of the entire year. And it's like it's over in the blink of an eye. It's, it's like so many things happened, but it all went so fast at the same time. You know? All the ups and downs. Every, every season is its own little story. And it's just crazy to think that it's coming to a close tomorrow. You know, I'll still be live. We're still going to do live hangouts. We're still going to do uh, call-in shows. We're still going to do update videos, transfer portal stuff recruiting, spring practice coming up, but there's nothing quite like a live game watch party when the Miami Hurricanes are taking the field. I don't think it gets much better than that, and I always miss them once it's over. I got you on the uh, Roblox thing. I sent you a request. Perfect. Thank you, my man. Thank you. All right, so uh, any other callers? Is anybody else trying to get through? Uh, Jackson Johnson, I can look out for you. We are going to wrap it up here in just a second. We're going to do super, super lightning round right here. Last last calls. We got to keep it just bing, bang, boom. And we're going to wrap it up. Okay, Jackson Johnson, what were, what were those numbers you put in? 35759. <laughs> no, wait a minute. What? Give me your area code. Give me your area code. What's up, Rose Queen? Yeah, we're wrapping up. We're about to call tonight. Two, three, five, seven, five, nine. What, what, what? What part of the phone number? Your area code is three. Huh? I'm. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. I'm confused. Well, well, well. Hello. I believe this might be my UM wife, Stephanie. It is. I called in the night before the first game, so I thought I'd call in the night before the last game. Heck yeah. How freaking appropriate is that? That's awesome. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. So let me let me get you added down to my notepad here. I already had the number. But let's add you down here. Okay. I'm actually quite curious to see where you stand on this as far as score wise. Um, because okay. I know I know you follow the canes closely here, so I want to see kind of how you're feeling about this one. So I'm gonna kick us over to the score prediction cam, and then you can provide some closing thoughts or anything if you want to to back up anything with the score prediction here. We're going to kick it over. All right. Myself and Kim K are ready for the magic numbers when you are. <laughs> okay. I'm going 28-13, Kane. 28-13, Miami victory. Okay. Let's lock it in. I, I like those numbers. I like that. Now, is there anything you want to add to it other than the numbers here? I do want to give you an opportunity to do that if you'd like. Um, I don't want to add anything to the score, but I wanted to say thank you to the Canes fam and you for bringing my football soul back to life. Hey, let's give, you know, I, I know you probably can't hear it on your end over the phone, but let's clap it up for everybody. For it, It's a family thing. It takes everybody, right? I say this all the time that you guys contribute a lot more than you realize by interacting with me by talking with everyone in the chat. We form bonds and, and, and friendships. And I always want this to be a family vibe, whether it's five people in here or 5,000 people in here. 
and I truly mean that. So let's clap it up for everybody for this season. I want this place to be unlike any other channel. And Stephanie, I, I, I'm not just trying to butter you up here. I truly mean this when I say it wouldn't be the same without you. Everybody knows Stephanie. So thank you well, for being so sweet, a part of the family. I'm serious. Thank you very much. And thank you for everything you did for me and the Canes fam this season. And just think about it, Stephanie. Me, you, Tropigal, uh, uh, who else? Chris, his wife, Monica, um, Don Calderolo, Juice, uh, Dudu, Melissa. I probably said a couple of names multiple times. We got to witness Miami beating Clemson at Hard Rock together in 2023. That was so awesome. I had so much fun. Yep. I, I, that is a memory that I'll never forget. So for real, thank you for being a part of it. And I, it's just, I, I love this family so freaking much. It's wild. Well, you do a great job and we all appreciate you. Okay. Well, we appreciate you and maybe, you know, 28 to 13 happens. And this $300 goes in Stephanie's pocket. So <laughs> we shall see. Okay. Well, you have a good night. All right. You too, Stephanie. Thanks for calling in. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. I like that score prediction too. I'm I, again, like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just saying that 28, 13. Okay. Okay. And this is where I tell you guys, all joking aside f for real. Like think about this for a second. This is one big family here. And I told you guys this before. Anytime I go to a game, there's, there's no awkwardness. There's no like, like I, I just run up to people and just to high five you, give you a big hug. We hang out. It's like we've known each other our entire lives. And some of you, I'm meeting you in person for the first time. And it doesn't matter because you can form these relationships through the internet. Times are different. You can live chat. You can go back and forth. It's wild, man. And I love it. And I'm super thankful. I'm super, super thankful for all y'all. All you guys. I know and the, the memories from the Clemson game. Man. What 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 a wild memory to have. You know? That's so much freaking fun. So much fun. Even got to meet Tropa Kid. Exactly. And then I end up sending Tropa Kid Pokemon cards for Christmas. <laughs> you just never know what's gonna happen. Oh, Ray Ray. Ooh. We'd like to see Ray 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 getting some burn. On defense, Bobby Washington and Markeith Williams. And there's probably going to be opportunities for all those guys to see some snaps. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Uh, first three digits are 256. Second three. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, okay, hold on. Um, <laughs> just give me the area code and we're Gucci. And I got you. I got you, Jackson. I got you. First time eating a chicken wing. The whole chicken wing debacle will go down, though, because... A lot of people noticed that there was already a bite out of the chicken wing. The phone line's open, by the way. And they called me out and said I was lying. The reality is I nibbled the chicken wing beforehand because I was scared it was going to be spicy and I didn't want to be embarrassed on social media. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I nibbled the chicken wing. I did. But I didn't fool on. Like... Would this happen to be Jackson Johnson? Would. It is. Up, My man, we got you in here. Good deal. Oh, man, thanks for letting me call in tonight. Oh, hey, man, I see I see your message right here where it says, so, so. no, 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 no reason to be sorry. I just wanted to make sure that we got you in here before we closed out tonight. So you're good, bro. You're good. Well, I will say I'm excited to discuss the, a little bit about the pen strike bowl. Um, it, it's going to be great, though, seeing a little nostalgia because, you know, Miami went up against Rutgers in the Big East days. Yeah, I mean, we, we used to play quite often. Yeah, well, and I will say Rutgers has never beaten you guys at all in, in the series history. Yeah, and I, I wish, I'm going to be honest with you, even though I'm confident in this game, I wish that carried more weight for me personally. But we've seen so many 
ups and downs and surprises as Miami fans, especially in bowl games, there's still those second thoughts, you know, in in the back of my mind going into this one. Well, and and before I go to my prediction, you talked a little while ago about the oopsie daisy games, like the games that may give you trouble, kind of like Georgia Tech. Mm-hmm. I I will say though, I do think you will. I think you'll do fine against like a Florida and or like a Louisville and like Florida State, but I do think USF or California will be like that one game that shouldn't give you trouble, but somehow gives you trouble. Because it's something I've seen with Mario Cristobal over the last few years at Oregon and Miami. He always wins like the games that you don't expect him to win, but he always loses that game that you shouldn't be losing. Yeah. I mean, think how long it had been since Miami had beat Clemson. And I know they didn't have the greatest year, but, bro, we, we played them with a freshman quarterback and won. But then we lost to, again, Georgia Tech. So it's a, make it make sense, you know? Yeah. I mean, that, that Georgia Tech game this year was like Oregon-Stanford from 2021. Yeah. Where Oregon gave up 99 yards on that game-tying drive. Now, real quick, you know, I, I just realized something. When when you're talking about Miami, you're not talking about them like you're a Miami fan. Who's your team? Um, Alabama. Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that until I, I I started noticing you were saying you guys and not Miami or us. And I was like, wait a second here. Okay, so you're an Alabama fan. Okay. Yeah. Are, are, are you guys winning a national championship? Huh? Are you guys winning a national championship? I hope. Because, I mean, give for Michigan, I mean. What if it's, what if it's against Washington, though? Uh. I don't think so, because go- good, cor- great quarterbacks always give Bama trouble. That's something I've noticed in our history over the last several years. Whoa, you're saying that if it was against Washington, you think Bama would lose? That's a toss-up. Uh-huh. It, it's a toss-up between Bama and Washington. But I will say, if you look back at the series history of Alabama-Washington, Washington has never beaten Alabama at all. But Washington did give us a dogfight in 1978, and Washington was also part of the 1926 Rose Bowl, where it was the game that changed the South, where Alabama won 20 to 19 against them. And you know there is a first time for everything. <clears throat> so you know, if yeah. If you want to factor that in, you know. <clears throat> oh yeah, the, totally, man. But I mean, Caleb Morrison. I'm just, job. I'm just giving you a hard time. Oh, uh, it's okay. Man. You're good. You're I, good. I think Bama does have a real shot. Like I said earlier, it, it, if you wanted me to put every penny to my name on it, I'd have to put it on Alabama. I would. <laughs> well, I appreciate your confidence <laughs> in my Crimson Tide, but I, I'm kind of like, I think Bama wins 31 to 20 against Michigan, but. I just hope we could get through Washington or Texas, but I mean, whether Michigan wins or Bama wins, it wouldn't surprise me either way. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be interesting for sure. I'll be watching. Uh, I'm going to be doing live hangouts for both games, just or all all the playoffs and the national championship, because I am a, I am a little intrigued with this one. Obviously, you know all the surrounding stuff, the way it went down, makes it kind of extra interesting as well. So. It's it's going to be fun to watch, see how it plays out. Oh, yeah. I mean, I I just wish we could have, like, a home-and-home with Michigan in the future. But I will say, I'm excited that you guys are playing Florida next year. I'm I'm so excited about that. We're pumped, man. I'd I'd love to play Florida every year, if I'm being honest. I don't know about you guys. What, you guys think the same? I'd totally be down to play Florida every year, or at the at the very least every other year. But I I take Florida every year, sure. Oh man, if I if oh man, I wish I I wish the state senate and Congress would say, <laughs> hey, uh, Florida, Florida State, Miami, you guys are playing each other every year. 
know it. Yeah. About. Yeah. So all I right, love that. Jackson, I'm gonna kick us over to the uh, the score prediction cam, the official score right. prediction cam here. Now this will be the second. Is that right? Second outside perspective. Uh, Big Red called in, and he's also a Bama fan, so two Alabama fans calling in tonight. And he predicted, he predicted thirty-one to ten Miami. So what does Jackson yeah. Johnson believe? Well, I don't want to hurt Miami Hurricane Nations, but I don't want to hurt uh, y'all's feelings. Oh no! Okay. I've seen that you guys are a Jekyll and Hyde team in college football. So reluctantly, I have to go with Rutgers 24 to 21 on this one. I mean, hey, I mean, it's $300 we're talking here. Yep. I'm so sorry. Hold on. I, I just have to sit down for a second. Hold on. Ooh. Am I the only one that went Rutgers? Yeah. Oh, yeah, only one. <clears throat> oh, wow. I apologize. <laughs> Whew, okay, I'm good, I think. Oh, sorry, I, I got a little bit lightheaded for a second. Um, Are you okay, man? I, I, I think I'll be okay. I uh, just, yeah. 24-21. Um, yep. Rutgers victory. Now, yep. yes, three hundred dollars is on the line. You acknowledge that, so I know you're aware of the the money. You're sure when I when, when I click the cha ching, it's official. You're locked in. There's no backing I'm, out. I'm positive. I'm positive. All right, I'm I'm doing it. I'm pressing the button. All right. I'm I'm about to press it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I'll let everybody know it, and you know, if I'm right, I'll let everybody know it. Um, I don't, I don't do the, I I won't lie. That's for sure. I'll just be like, hey, you know, I was right on this, or hey, I was wrong on that. That I can promise you. All right, Jackson. I, I apologize. I uh, there was a very interesting comment that that popped up that I was I was taking a closer look at. Um, I got you locked in twenty four to twenty one Rutgers victory. And I mean, if you're right, man, you'll be it. It it's for the internet's forever. So this live stream will be posted up. It'll be up on the channel. Thousands of people will end up watching it by the time it's said and done. And uh, if you're right, you'll be rubbing this three hundred dollars in everybody's face. So, well, I'm not gonna do that. You know, I'm not gonna you do should. that. Should if you win, you should. I know, but if I <laughs> brag, it's bad karma. Fair, okay. All right, man. So I I got you locked in here, and I will save your number. So feel free to call in any time in the future. I got you, and uh, because I mean we do this for every game, every Miami game that is. So there's always right. some some money on the line if you want a chance to win. So, all right, man. Uh, thanks for letting me call in. It, it's an honor being your first time caller of uh, Coach Coop. Hey, I appreciate you, man. You have a good night. You too. Stay all safe. Right. Stay warm. Hey, right, I'll try to. Peace out, man. Peace. That was the second first time caller tonight. Correct. Hold on. Hold on. Looking at my numbers here. Uh, one, second first time caller of the night. That's huge, man. I, I I love that. Love, 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 love that. And two Bama fans. It again shows uh, that we're, we're expanding a bit with the viewer base. I've had a lot more Bama and Florida State fans on the channel this season. A lot more. And that's exciting. That's exciting, man, uh, to get different points of view and stuff. Uh, also, it's not going to be 80 and sunny like home sweet home. Who's your team, Mike? 
Miami is poverty. I know Rutgers ain't your team. Who is it? Who is it? Florida State, Georgia, Alabama, Washington, Michigan. Who is it? I'm waiting. Florida. Who is it, Mike? Uh, sign KJ Jefferson, save some money. Uh, Cam then used that money left over and a little more to sign, sign Malachi Nelson. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, again, there are several scenarios that could play out there. Uh, I don't hate that idea. I, I like KJ Jefferson personally. Uh, it, there was a lot of negativity surrounding it when his name popped up and was tied to Miami. I like KJ Jefferson just personally. So I, I'm a fan of that, Julian. Miami is completely depleted. Cristobal isn't focused on this game. He only cares about the incoming class. Rutgers only has one CB out. Y'all are letting your emotions get in the way. Rutgers by two and a half. Now, here's the thing, though, Prime K. I have to say this. I set fandom and emotions to the side. And I think that my score predictions over the season have reflected that. Keeping in mind, I predicted 7-5. and five. So I don't go homer mode. But are you telling me that even a somewhat depleted Miami team, you're telling me you don't think Miami matches up with Rutgers? I mean, I guess you kind of still think so if you have Rutgers by... If you, Are you just quoting the... Because the the line is at two and a half, right? Rutgers are favored by two and a half. Like, what would your actual score prediction be for the game? That's what I want to know because I'm factoring in, I, I'm factoring in uh, the opt outs, the transfers. Again, what does Rutgers do? All they can do is run the ball. Miami has defended the run very well this season. Now, again, there are some question marks on if they're going to defend it as well with the players that are out there on defense because Miami is missing some big-time players. They are. I still just don't think even – because I've got it being somewhat close. Yeah. I said I've, I've fully acknowledged uh, that we are missing a lot of players due to multiple different things. But I still, at the end of the day, do not think that Rutgers can beat Miami. Do I think it can be close? Absolutely. I sure do. Sure, sure do. So we'll see. Rutgers only has one corner out. Yeah, I mean, I understand. But even given that, so if Miami then played UTEP, but UTEP returned all their starters, would you pick UTEP? I still think when you when you match it up, you're acting like Miami is only playing all true freshmen. So I don't know. We'll see. Well, we'll revisit this. We'll revisit this. I, I want to see a score prediction. I want to see a score prediction here. Uh, how much more better is Cam over KJ? I don't think it's light years. Malachi is a baller QB and can be the starter the year after. We don't have to stress about finding a QB in the future like we have. And Miami has mismanaged the quarterback room for a long time. I mean, I love Judd, but Judd being the only quarterback we brought in, I think Judd's still a three-star, right? No shade at Judd. Love Judd. I'm just saying I, 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 I like that approach. I like that approach. Uh, this game is a scrimmage for the new guys. Yeah, and I think that it can be close, but I just don't think Rutgers brings enough to the table. I think that if it came down to it, Miami, just based on athleticism and, and talent, as long as we don't have a ton of coaching blunders, I think Miami can win on that alone. Like I think we can come out there and just out-muscle Rutgers. I do. I'm, I'm waiting for a score prediction. And then we're going to call tonight. Actually, I needed to get Bryce in here. Bryce, you wanted to call in, correct? And Crip. I was supposed to call Crip. I got to go extra lightning. I got to go extra lightning round. And I'll humor it, bro. We like to talk trash, but like, like, come on now. Come on. We need numbers. 
Mike, who's your team? Who, Mike, who's your team? Come on. Come on, Mike. Who's your team? When Hurricane Bain hits their QB and the running back and running back, the back pedal will start for Rutgers. You threw down a hundred on Miami. It's tempting, man. It's tempting. Not gonna lie. Uh, are you by chance going to Georgia Tech game in uh, ATL? I'm not sure yet. Uh, I haven't picked my games. I'll be honest with you. Coop doesn't plan more than like 24 hours in advance. <laughs> <laughs> phone lines open back up i need to get bryce in here crip are you still here you still here crip who's 850 what's up with brashard i don't know i'm kind of worried about it i'm not gonna lie i'm, I'm a tad worried yo yo bryce what's good what's up group I right, chilling. You know how it is. Um, yes, I do. Once again, I get Bryce in on the lightning round, so I feel like poo poo for doing that. But uh, yeah, I think so Bryce is okay good. with with being up for winning three hundred dollars potentially here. So, Bryce, I'm gonna go ahead and put it straight to the Kim K Cam. I know my man Bryce ain't gonna let me down. Bryce has got a Miami victory. I, I know it. I feel it. I'll go... I'll go 28-20. In favor of? The U. <laughs> the U. I love it. All right, Bryce, I'm going to lock you in. Let's make it official. 28 to 20 Miami dub. We can't we can't end on somebody predicting a Rutgers victory. I mean, that would just be wild. We we can't do that. Um so uh, I got you locked in, say, my man. I, yeah, I will say this though. I do like the confidence though. You like what? I'll give him that I I'll say this though. I'll get I do like the confidence though. I'll give him that much. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, and I've said this. I don't think Rutgers will be just a straight walk in the park. And, and like I said, even though I'm predicting a Miami win, my score prediction reflects that. I've only got the Canes winning by four. Yeah. So, I mean, you know? Mm-hmm. I think we all can agree, you know, what? again, it's just a hard game to predict because of the circumstances that we're in. But at the end of the day, I think any Miami fan will take a win, and especially a bowl win. We have won one since like 2016, man. Oh yeah, um, we by one so point, definitely... ten points, fifty points. We, we we need a bowl game victory. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I'm gonna let you go. Make sure to get Crip call, my dude. Oh yeah, I'll get him in here, Bryce. I I appreciate you as always, my man. Of course, brother. All right, you have a good night. You too. At least you're not like most delusional Miami fans predicting 50-point victories every game. I keep, I keep it real. I keep it real. Uh, I, I, I get a lot. It's funny because the most hate I receive is from fellow Miami fans. But it's because people either want me to be a sunshine pumper or they want me to be doom and gloom. And I fall right in the middle. I go with what I believe is the most realistic. I try to look at the stats, I try to watch the games, and then I try to predict it based off of that with fandom and emotion set to the side. Now, I'm going to talk trash. The, the What confuses people is I'll even predict a loss, but then jump on Twitter and run my mouth. And you're, I know what you're thinking. Well, Coop, you can't do that. You think Miami's going to lose. None of that is ever set in stone. So if I predict a Miami loss... I still want Miami to win, and I hope they win, and I hope they prove me wrong. So with that being said, I'm still going to talk trash because anything could happen. Miami could win. Just because I'm predicting a loss doesn't mean anything. I'm just some random dude on YouTube, you know? But I try to have a pretty good track record, and we did really well with predictions this year. Really, really well. What's up, Corey Gray? 
Hey, I miss most of the live streams now. Good to see you in the fam. We appreciate you, bro. Even just stopping in and saying hello. Just let me know that you're still kicking, bro. I appreciate that. Appreciate you. Um, so we need to get Crip in here, right? Is that how we're going to wrap it up? Crip, are you awake? Paging Crip? Crip? Uh-oh, Crip might have passed out. I don't see him in the live chat. Crip, are you there? Crip to the principal's office. Crip to the principal's office. I thought that might I thought that might have woke him up if he was asleep. Yes. Okay, Crip, we're gonna get you in here to uh to wrap this thing up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Crip. I got you, man. Uh, does anybody balling, who's whose area code is eight five zero? Because I want I want to get you in here, but then we're wrapping it up for. I said I was going to end at eleven, and it's twelve. What am I doing over here? Uh, Corey Gray for forty months. Thank you for the love, man. Thank you. What up, coach and fam? I hate I miss almost every live stream now, but I'm here. I got Miami twenty three to ten. We get a sack back tomorrow <laughs> Corey gray thank you very much for the love appreciate you re-upping that canes fan membership like i said just let us know you're still alive and kicking rocking with the canes my man from time to time and we just miss you we miss the going back and forth and stuff i appreciate you thank you bro 23 to 10 okay 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 i'll take that uh devin is your area code 850 by chance Let's see if Crip answers. What's your area code, Devin? Yeah. Yo, my man, Crip. What's up, Keith? Crip, are you mad at me? No, I mean, no, you had a genuine reason. <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just a little tired right now. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, like, I, I want to get the car going. I just keep it the... All the well, stuff with the oven, the Christmas happened. stuff. I was sick yesterday. But don't worry. I'm going to call you, and I, I'm telling you, you, you can ask my wife. I'm super pumped and excited to drive this car around. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. I'm going to take. We got some back roads back here where no cars and stuff drive on it. I'm going to take it out there and get a little radar gun and check it and see how fast it goes. What, dirt, you got dirt roads? Dirt or paved. Either one. Nice, nice, nice. So, all right, Crip. This is your final opportunity in 2023 to walk away with $300 by simply giving a score prediction. So, I'm going right. to kick it over to the score prediction, Cam. Crip, this is it. I believe. Hit me with the numbers. <laughs> 21 to 7, Miami. 21 to 7, Miami. Only giving the Scarlet Knights one touchdown. I like it, Crip. <laughs> <laughs> I got you locked in, bro. 21 to 7. And again, I appreciate your patience with everything. And as soon as this settles down, then uh, I'll, I'll give you a ring and, and, and we'll make it happen and We'll get this bad boy set up. All right. All right. I appreciate you, Crip. You have a good one. You too. All right. Peace, bro. Going straight to bed. <laughs> All right. I feel you. I'm going to have to do the same. All right. See you later, bro. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. He made it. Crip, Crip was on the struggle bus, but he made it. So, Devin, what was your area code? I can do it. Yeah. I'm known as the fastest uh, phone call answerer and and uh, and uh, yeah 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 um five one seven all right I'll be I'll be looking out for you uh true lightning round one or two more calls and for real Coop has got to get the heck out of here I have so much work to do for tomorrow so so much work 
Uh, but I want somebody to win the money. So I, I got it open. I got it open. Last shot, y'all. Last shot. Give me a ring, Devin. Give me a ring. Let's see what this 850 is. Yo, yo, who we got on the line tonight? This is Eddie B, DJ E Rock Knight. Eddie B, what's up, bro? Hey, what's good, man? Ah, uh, you know. Been trying to reach trying. you for a while. Well, I, I'm trying to give somebody three hundred dollars. Is it going to be you? Yes, sir. Okay, good deal. So it it is. And it's all about you. I got to say that first off. Always. Man, I'm a first time caller. So. Always. So third first time caller of the night. Now, just to make sure, I'm going to get your number saved in my phone for for future calls because this can't be the last yes, time. Sir. What what did you yes, say your, the name was again? Eddie. Just put Eddie B. Eddie B. J E Rock Knight. Okay. I got you down, my man. All right. So we we are in a bit of a lightning round. So we're, we're going to make it quick here, but I want to get you in so that way you're officially entered for the cash. So I'm going to kick it over to the score prediction, Cam. All right. I'm ready when you are. I'm going to give the score of 33-17 Miami. 33-17 Miami. I like it. I'll take it, bro. Let's get you locked in. Yes, sir. Lock it on in. All right. It is officially <laughs> official. There's no going back now. You can't change it. So. Oh, no. It's, it's all about that. It's all about you, baby. Hey, let's go, man. Eddie B., I appreciate yeah. you being patient tonight. We got you in here. You're officially entered. And uh, let's hope that we oh, get that I dub tomorrow. Yes, sir. We got to get that W. We got to get that bowl win. We ain't had one in a long time. So. Yep. Yeah, give us uh, good momentum carrying over the next season. So, oh, definitely, it, it's it's very much yeah. needed for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I wanted to uh, pay a compliment, man. I've been watching you since the beginning. I see you got a good show, man. I I, I watch I, you all the time. I even got my mom and everybody watching. <laughs> I love that. Like I said, hey, it's a family thing around here, right? That's oh the, yeah, that's the vibe I always hey, want to give off. I want everybody to feel appreciated, okay. and I want. I want everybody to feel like they have a voice, you know? Yes, sir. When, when people call into these things and they comment, you know, thousands of people watch these videos by the time it's all said and done. So you do have a voice. People do see it. And we have players right. that jump in sometimes. And, and, and so people see it, man. So I oh, I, yeah. I, I really appreciate you. Yeah, and I wanted to t tell you something kind of unique because I am a DJ, but I'm a huge Miami fan. I was born in Tallahassee. Seminole country, blue. Seminole. Sorry, hold on. Yeah, Blech. but I lived, right. but I lived in Fort Lauderdale in Miami too, and I've always been a cane. And my DJ name is DJ E Rock Nice, but my AKA is Mister Eight Five Zero to the Three Hundred Five. <laughs> I love yes, it. Sir. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, cool little good, story, good my job, man. Good man, and, I, and I've been looking at you, checking out everything you've been doing. I see you. It, it's real unique, and I, I love everything you're doing, man. Hey, I appreciate you, and I, I got to say, I'm just glad you didn't decide to root for those bad guys. <laughs> oh, no. I've been, you know how you know how bad it's been all my life, and they'll say, like, you know where you are? You in Seminole country. I say, I don't give a damn when I show up to you. <laughs> Oh, uh, I love it, bro. I rep my team regardless. And there you go. I was already 100%, but then when I moved to Miami, I was like 1,000 then. Heck, yeah. Hey, keep 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 repping the Canes, man, that orange and green. It, we're we're yes, ride sir. or die, man. We we never give up. Keep repping the squad, and I, I just appreciate you For calling. Life. Thank you. For oh, life. yeah, I appreciate you. And uh, Merry Christmas, belated, and Happy New Year, man. Hey, same to you and your family as well. I, I really appreciate yes, you, sir. bro. Yes, sir. Uh, you have a good one. All right, you too. Good night. All right, see you. Yes, sir. Excellent caller. A excellent caller, man. <laughs> that gummit having to live in Tally. Ain't nobody want to live up there. Woo. All right, man. Let's close this thing out with Devin Harrison. Eddie, thank you for calling in tonight, bro. I got your number saved. Been rocking with me for a while. I appreciate that.
Yo, 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 is this Devin Harrison? Yes, it is. What's up? Now, have have you called into the show? No, I haven't. Oh, my. Uh, we got to clap it up again. Hold on. <laughs> wrong button, wrong button. I'm hitting wrong buttons. Four. Count them. Four. First time callers tonight. This honestly might be a new record. That that's insane. <laughs> I know you're a Canes fan member. I know you're supporting the channel, and I appreciate it. But I I, I didn't have your number saved, so we hadn't got you on the line before. Um, yeah. Now, so you're familiar with the show, so you know three hundred bucks is on the line, correct? Yes, I do. Okay. So with that being said, you got you got to go with realistic here. What you firmly believe is going to put this three hundred dollars in your pocket with this score prediction. So we're doing a bit of a lightning round. I'm going to kick it over to the official Kim K score prediction cam. Pen and paper in hand, Devin. I'm ready. My prediction score is 28-14. In favor of? Miami. All right. All the way. We got to make it official for the video. 28 to 14. Let's lock you in. All right. Final call of the night is another Miami dub. I'll take it. 28 to 14. Devin, I, I appreciate your patience in, in getting in tonight. And you're officially entered for the $300 score prediction contest. Thank you. Thank you. All it's right. hard being up here in Ann Arbor. Ooh. All these Michigan folks. Oh, Okay. Now, are you, uh, have you always lived there or? Oh, no. I was in Virginia with a bunch of Hokies. Oh, my gosh. So, how did you become a Miami fan? I was born in Florida. Oh, okay. So, okay, gotcha. I saw a Miami hat, and then from there on, I was a Miami Hurricane (laughs) fan. When you see that you, it just does something, doesn't it? It gives you like this warm, fuzzy feeling inside. And, you know, I try to tell people, all these Florida State fans and Alabama fans and stuff in my channel, I tell them, e- even if you have to do it in, like, go in the bathroom, close the door, and you can even turn the light off. Make sure nobody's around to video you. There's no evidence. And just throw the you up, and I'm telling you, that feeling that you're going to feel, you, you, you will instantly become a Miami fan. You will convert on the spot. Even if it's secret in the back of your mind and you never want to admit it, You'll be a Miami fan. I'm telling you, just try it. Listen, I tell my dad that too. He's an FSU fan. And, and, and he threw up the U, and he's still a Florida State fan. He will never throw up the U. Ah, uh, see, that's a why. State fan. If he'll if he'll throw horrible. it up, man, he'll throw it up. <laughs> uh, shoot, well, I bet that's a good time then when Miami and Florida State play. Oh yeah, we don't talk. Yeah, well, you know, it's been a little tough to run our mouth over the past couple of years, right? But Yeah. <laughs> we're trending up, all right? We're trending up. Oh, we are. We are. We going to get them next year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got them. We got them. So, hey, man, I, I appreciate you calling in. Final caller of the night. And uh, like I said, I got you officially locked in for the, the contest. So, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for serving my call, man. All right. Absolutely. Love your show. Hey, thank you for that. You have a good night. You too, man. All right. Peace. Peace. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. What a night. What a night. The final call-in show. In 2023. Man. This is it, guys. This was it. Tropa gal, thank you for the 305. That's going to look good sitting up there, too, with the 305. How fitting. Love it, love it, love it. What a night, man. I have, We took so many calls tonight. It might have been a record for phone calls. It might have been a record for first-time callers. Heck of a night. Uh, this time, yeah, it's time to wrap this thing up. Uh, what a way to end an extreme year, Coop. You hit 23,000 subscribers this year. We did. 
We hit 23,000 in 2023, and that's thanks to you guys. A final round of applause for all of you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We started the year at 20K, by the way. We started the year at 20,000. I think we hit 20K in early January, and uh, we grew to 23,000. This is what it takes. 3,000 new family you. members this year. Sorry, That's helping. huge. There's no greater gift than friendship. Very true. And we have formed some lifelong friendships within this community. You know, that's that's probably the number one thing I say. Closing thoughts. We're wrapping up. But people are hitting the hay. Got a long day tomorrow. I get it. I have a lot of people ask me this question, Tropical. And my answer is the same every time. They say, Coop, why would I watch your channel covering the Miami Hurricanes when you live in Tennessee? And that's uh, understandable. I get why people would ask that. And I always answer with the same response. The community. And they're like, what do you mean the community? I say the idea behind this channel is to bring Canes fans together from all across the world. So, yeah, I, I don't live in Florida. Uh, I'm blessed to have some connections in Florida. So, you know, I have some conversations with players and I've formed friendships. Uh, I know several of the big time donors and boosters and stuff I get to speak with. And I'm very fortunate because in today's times in the Internet age, Communication is instant. But I tell people it's about the community. The family vibe. That's what this thing is about. Even if you don't like me, you don't like my delivery, you don't like the funny skits and, and, and all the nonsense and shenanigans. We have an awesome community here from people that do live in Florida, but also people that live all across the world. We have people that watch from England, Africa, Japan, everywhere and it's about bringing all of the college football family together so we can talk football the sport that we love that's what it's about and we embrace the trash talk as well we embrace it we love it i'll get down with some trash talk mike i'll take it <laughs> I love it, bro. I love it. Oh, shoot. Yo, man, trash talk is always welcome here. I'm not like those guys that ban people after they put one mean thing about Miami. You can come in here and talk trash. It's welcome. It's welcome. And please keep doing it. I'm serious. I love it. Uh, I can't watch the game. I'll be working, but I'll have Coop Live Game Hangout playing in the AirPods. <laughs> I love it. Appreciate you, Brandon. Fans of different teams, too. Exactly. Yeah. And I do try to remind people that I, I do funny, goofy stuff. And that's just because I'm, I'm a goofy guy. So that translates to my videos. I'll never try to fit in this box or this mold uh, to be this person that people want me to be. A lot of people say, you're not the, the definition of a Canes fan. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I, I let my goofiness come out in the videos because that's the kind of person I am. A goofy goober. Exactly. So why would I pretend to be someone else? That becomes exhausting. And that you can apply that to your everyday life. Pretending to be someone else, liking things you don't like, you will get exhausted. It's much easier when you are just yourself. But I do remind people of this. I start off with funny skits and goofy things and we crank the siren and we do all this. But we actually do have plenty of moments where we're serious. I take my predictions and breakdowns very serious. When we do the breakdowns of the numbers and the stats and, and final predictions and actually talking football, I like to inject some humor here and there, but I do take that very serious. So I do think it's funny when a lot of people dislike me because they only see bits and pieces of content on Twitter or stuff that's shared on Facebook and social media. And there are people are always like, who's that goofy, stupid dude? Hey, he, he's always, he only does silly stuff, and he never takes anything serious. 
and they never realize that they're only seeing 1% of what we do here. You know? If, if people would take 10 to 15 minutes in a live stream or a video, they would realize that we're here to have fun and also talk football. You can have both. So I just always try to remind people of that. They, they're only seeing a very small portion of what we do here. You know? And I'll, I'll never stop being myself. And I'll never change the way we operate and run this channel. And I'm thankful for each and every one of you guys. I feel like I'm saying goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow at 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time for the Pinstripe Bowl. But I just want you guys to know how much I appreciate you. I want you to know how much... I just, I love y'all, for real. You don't have to say it back, but I love y'all. And thank you for everything. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being part of my family. Thank you for being part of this, this whole thing. Because I never thought it would be this. So thank you. Uh, Legend123, we have wrapped up. I've closed the phone line. I'm sorry, my man. Hopefully we'll get you in on the next one. But it's the final one of 2023. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Final game. Appreciate all the love tonight. We had a three-way tie for the top donation. Buzz Talk, Tucci, and Daytime Cheese, all with the 10, the triple 10. Thank you guys for the love tonight. And I'll see you tomorrow, and we'll find out how this thing plays out. We'll see how it goes down. I'll have links, like I said, if you need them. But otherwise, you're more than welcome to jump in, hang out, have a good time. We'll react. And hopefully Mario gets his first bowl game victory as a Miami Hurricanes head coach. Love you guys. Go Canes. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm ready. I'm ready, bro.